Anyway, hello and welcome everybody. So welcome to the 3.22 Righteous Fire Inquisitor YouTube campaign run. Now this is going to be a long video, so go ahead and, you know, get ready, get cozy, get your music playing, whatever you need to do. Before we get started with this, I want to go ahead and plug a few things uh, that's going to assist us on our journey. So first up, if you have ever migrated to my channel at twitch.tv slash pox, you'll know that there is a filter command here you can use. The filter command will bring up my loot filters that we will be using for the campaign run. Um, so we'll be using this one right here. Now it may be changed, but all you need to see is 3.22 RF Inquisitor and 1 to 70 is going to be like the main. I'll try not to change it. There should be a little follow button here so you can click follow and that will beam right on in, in game and we'll show that as well. The second thing that I want to bring up for you guys um, would be the path of building. So to bring up the path of building, you can just go to pox.net right here and just go ahead where it says RF Inquisitor, click copy URL. Now, after you have copied this URL, you're going to need the official POB community fork, which you can actually find right over here on my website as well. Or you can go ahead and Google it. Either one is fine. So I'm going to close out of that. Once you have that link, you're going to click import. You're going to import it in and then we can get started. Now, I may not be following everything one for one exactly on the POB as that's too much work. As a guy who plays POE all day long, 24 seven, I will kind of make some, you know, adaptate, adapt, I will adapt based off of what I need, but 95% is going to be the same. So you can pretty much just follow along. Um, over here, we've got the tree, we've got the skill section, and we've got the item section. So note that they are organized by level and there is some text on some of these items. So whenever you basically outscale the bracket, you take it, you go to the next bracket, you go to the skills, you do the same thing, you go to the tree and you do the same thing. With that being said, we're going to jump on in on a brand new fresh character. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be making my character in SSF. It doesn't really matter, you know, where you're playing from. Um, and uh, let's see, Pox, RF, YouTube, run. Now, one of the nice things about playing Inquisitor Righteous Fire for people is that you don't actually have to mule anything. So you don't have to make a witch. You don't have to worry about that whatsoever. So let's go ahead and go to options. Let's go to our item filter. If you clicked it and you hit follow, you'll see it right over here. So we are just immediately going to apply. Our game is gonna freeze. Everything is good to go. Let's get started. So I'll do my best to plug a lot of info and tips as I kind of go through the guide. There is going to be a lot. So I hope you guys are ready for the journey. So you're gonna get your glacial hammer. Go ahead and slap that into your gear. Now, there's not really a reason to kill anything here. If you want to, you absolutely could. We're going to slap in elemental proliferation into our glacial hammer. And we are just running right to Hillock. Wherever he is. Okay. For Hillock, I like to uh, kite him counterclockwise. You count them counterclockwise, or if you kite them counterclockwise, you don't really ever get hit. Especially with the chill on the glacial hammer. Okay, or the freeze. My god. Just like frozen from full life. See you later. I'm gonna grab all of this stuff. You'll notice that that iron ring flagged on the filter. We're gonna save that. We want that for later. Your background is a little off. You mean the black line here? Don't worry about it. That's just technical difficulties. So I have designed a tab right here. We're not touching any of our SSF tabs. We just have this little one here and we are going to save it. So I'm going to go ahead and vendor some of this stuff. Chat real fast. Could you guys give me the uh, copy paste from the jug? Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. So there is a, a filter I had on my jug, which had early int gear and movement speed boots. We don't actually need int gear on Inquisitor. We actually get a lot of int. So I'm gonna take the rolling magma and all I'm gonna do here is just type NN. And all this is gonna do is highlight runner. So NN for runner for movement speed boots. We didn't find any. So I'm just gonna move on. Um, it's also potentially a nice idea if you find a blue, blue, blue 
to snag a blue 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 we're gonna want this later for some of our links remember you can always peek into path of building so i'll give a quick example here so if you open up the skill section and you go to the 1 to 12 and you look here you'll notice i'm running rolling magma combustion le pro lift so you can kind of peek at the links ahead of time the filter will also tag this stuff when it drops so i'm gonna go ahead and just snag the blue 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 and we're gonna hold it to the side and also check Nessa here and see if she has any coral rings. Coral rings are nice to buy, but we don't actually have enough wisdoms. So we're just going to go ahead and move on. So we don't really need the glacial hammer. We're taking that off. We do, however, want to use that Ellie Prolif. So I'm going to slap that on there. Yep. Let's just get rid of this and let's continue our journey. Elemental Proliferation is a support gem that gives us, uh, I believe, chance to ignite. Does it also have that on there? Yeah, so it gives us chance to ignite with a chance to create this Circle Proliferation, which is really good for leveling. Um, basically, whenever you roll it, you see the mob. It's kind of like burning on fire and running. That's what the Proliferation does. So you also notice that on the loot filter, we drop something that looks blue like this. If it's got a blue background, it's because it's linked with RBG. And you can vendor that for a chromatic. So that's just straight to the vendor. It's a little hard to remember all of the stuff on the loot filter because it's kind of defaulted on Neversync side. So I'll do my best to try to explain it, but some of this stuff is just kind of natural, so I don't really think about it. Remember, you don't really need to kill everything. I just kind of like hiding until we have a big group of monsters and then kind of just hit it. There is an MP flask here. We'll just go ahead and pick that up. Now, as we are doing this for the next league, we will not be interacting with Crucible at all, so we won't touch Crucible whatsoever. So now we're going to come across the most dangerous part in all of Path of Exile. That's right, the second zone, or I guess third, Mudflats. Now, if you've picked up any armor gear and equipped it, you're already kind of good to go. Um, these mobs do crazy amounts of damage, and they also charge you. You'll notice I'm skipping this pack of zombies. You see this little shield here? That's because they are fire and ignite resistant. We're going to leave them alone We'll be able to deal with them later, but for right now, we're skipping that modifier. So here, we're just going to kind of peek a little bit and just sort of try to pull out those Roas. Otherwise, we're going to run in and they're going to charge us and we're going to die. You do want to kill pretty much any blue pack you fight, though. If you look at the XP from killing a blue monster, it's kind of crazy. So a lot of these white items that drop, you don't really have to pick them up. There's no harm in picking them up if you don't have anything equipped because it will help you. So I'll also grab this leather hat here and we'll go ahead and identify it. So what did we get? Well, a little bit of life. That's not too bad. Rustic Sash is okay. We don't really have a belt, although it doesn't do anything for us yet. It's still okay. In case you want to run Holy Flame Totem a little later. A lot of people don't enjoy rolling magma, so there is a section for Holy Flame Totem. That's where the physical damage on the belt would help. Oh, okay. We're going to snag that. So you'll notice there that the loot filter flagged again. That's basically highlighting a three link that's usable for our build. So I believe this would be for the Holy Flame Totem variant. That's, uh, I think, added fire, Holy Flame Totem, and summon Phantasm. I don't remember if Templar gets all of those gems, though. Okay, and let's move on towards there. All right, so we snagged it. We're going to go ahead and go through the submerged passage. Then we are going to just jump backwards. And we're going to go back to the vendor now, and we're going to search for NN for a runner. This is also when you want to go ahead and look for... Uh... Oh, also grab flame wall here. This is very big. Flame wall and frost blink. This is when you can again look for your um, desired links. I'm sure somebody in the comments will post a uh, what's called a regex so you can type it in. So here's like, for example, a twig spirit shield. I'm actually going to buy this because the colors are very good for flame surge for later. 
So that one we'll just put, and I'm going to weapon swap and put it on right over there. Actually, I'll just put it on right there. That's fine. Right, so search, and then there is nothing there. Stay sharp out there. Yes. And again, you can look through here and snag a coral ring. I don't think there's anything wrong with buying them. She has quicksilvers? I have never seen that before. Also, these here, these goat horns, are incredibly strong. Um, the reasoning on goat horns being incredibly strong is they roll with base damage to spells. So I'm actually going to snag this goat horn, and uh, I kind of want to snag even this goat horn right here, and we'll use them later. Not now, but later. So I'm going to keep these to the side, and you'll notice now, remember I was telling you about this selling for a chromatic? When I vendor that, we get the chromatic. So let's go ahead and continue. I'm also going to grab that flame wall. It doesn't matter if it's linked or not, and I'm going to grab that frost blink. Now we're going to go for hail rig. So... Flame Wall, the, the, the main purpose of this is it's basically an extra link for your rolling magma. So you'll notice when we shoot the rolling magma, it looks like this. If we shoot it through the Flame Wall, it gets this added fire. It's kind of hard to tell, uh, but it does a lot more damage, like a ton of damage. For boots there I could have picked up. Let's just go ahead and grab those. Why not? Perfect. Something that helps a lot of players, myself included, is using the attack uh, without moving. What that does, you'll see when I click it and select it, makes it so that your character will not try to run to the target to cast. It will just simply cast. This can give you more control over your character. Alright, so there's the boss. So we'll just put down the rolling magma and kind of just go in. You can either go in a circle around him. Or it's really up to you. There, are, there is like a sweet spot with rolling magma where you can hit twice, but I would say just prioritize trying to actually hit him, um, hit like hitting the target. Don't worry too much about that. So I like to log out here to save a portal scroll. Um, so now we're just going to talk to Nessa, grab our Quicksilver. If you end up finding another one, you can absolutely use multiple Quicksilvers. Now over here, we're going to grab that Arcane Surge. And I'm just going to go ahead and slap it over here. It doesn't really matter what it's... Actually, just kidding. Let's put it with our rolling magma. There we go. Now, um, we are actually going to just vendor the gear unidentified, I think, for the transmutation shards. We're going to want those later. All right, now we have two goals. So, goal number one is getting to ledge, and goal number two is killing Dweller. Must have time to You'll know that you're getting the ledge when you see a... I don't know all of the zone, like, layouts. I know very few. Act one, I know a little bit of. There's kind of like this ramp, sort of. I'll show you it when we come across it. I think it's actually right over here. It looks like it's right here. So, if you have a portal scroll, drop your portal scroll now. If not, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. There's a coral ring. Let's grab that. Yeah, let's actually identify that as well. Maybe we get cast speed on it. Oh, got cold res. Here's a blue pack. Make sure you kill the blue pack. Grab some of these blue equipment so that we can vendor it later. Sorry, Crucible. Not doing you. All right. Combustion is after Brutus, right, chat? Okay, so we have 23 intelligence. These goat horns require 29. Redemption over here gives us intelligence, so we can use it officially then. That guy has the fire and ignite res, so we are skipping him. Also, whenever your arcane surge is ready to level... You can go ahead and just right click it and it will stop it from leveling permanently. You don't have to do this. The reason I like to do it is that it prevents it. So basically Arcane Surge, whenever you level it up, you have to spend more MP to get the buff. I don't really like that. So this is an essence of Woe. Woe gives spell damage. So we're gonna go ahead and kill this guy. The spell damage can be crafted on a lot of different things, but the main purpose of this is we're gonna use it on one of these goat horns that we found. So I'm going to just grab this, grab the life flask, save this to the side. Now I have two pairs of boots here. We're going to identify both of them. But first, we're going to identify the rare, hoping for movement speed. 
We did not get any, so let's identify the blue ones. We did not get any. We got life. I'm going to go ahead and put them on. Let's also put on one of these new life flasks. Plate vest. We don't need the colors. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab retribution. And now if you remember, we put down a waypoint or a teleport. So we're going to go ahead and take that now. So first, let's clean up our inventory a little. Yes. Get rid of all this. We don't want it. Equip our ring. I'm going to use the Essence of Woe on this, this wand right here. We hit Cold Multi, Fire. It's okay. It's nothing special. We're going to take off this, put it on, put our Flame Wall back. And then I'm even going to equip the Goat Horn over the shield. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to put the shield in my offhand. And vendor this one right here. Good. I'm going to save the Glacial Hammer for later. And what we can actually do with the MP Flasks is we can take off these three. And we can do what's known as three for one to get a better one. And then, of course, since I don't have Movement Speed Boots, I'm going to go back to the vendor. Type in NN and see if there's boots. And there is not. So let's continue. So this... Submerged Passage here is going to take us directly to Dweller. Well, close to Dweller, right? Again, if you don't have it, it's fine. You can just take the waypoint. It's not that big of a deal. I don't think he's over here. I'm guessing he's, like, down there. But let's just check. Yeah, he's down there. I'm guessing he's over here. All right. So there's the Arcane Surge trying to level. We're just going to right-click it. And now it's down here, and it will not level ever again. We do want to level the Rolling Magma and the Ellie Prolif. Those are cool gloves. We're going to take those. The reasoning I like these is it's the perfect colors and it's not on a weapon, so if we find a better weapon, we can immediately replace it. Even though we don't have the links on a weapon, but yeah, you get the point. Okay, here is Dweller. Down they go, grab all the loot. I'm gonna go ahead and relog and then vendor it. Yeah. What little help I and we are gonna keep the gloves. In fact, I'm just gonna equip them to make sure I don't accidentally screw it up. Farewell. Good. Grab our extra skill point. And you can choose to go, this is up to you. If you want more damage, you can go Amplify. I'm going to go down into Discipline and Training and skip Amplify till later. Okay, let's continue our run. So look at your mini-map. We want to keep going the way that's unexplored here. We just teleported back to Ledge. Okay, there's another pair of boots. I'm going to identify them and see if we can get movement speed. Nope. Grab our big life node here. Now for players who want additional damage, you can also go ahead and take precision. It'll give you attack speed um, and cast speed. Attack speed will help you with leap slam that we can actually grab now, later, after Brutus. After Brutus, I think. Um... And it will make your it will make your uh, rolling magma feel better because you have bonus cast speed. Uh oh, that's a little dangerous. Not have done that. I, must have time to gather blood. I don't know if I really want to use my augmentation for trying to get movement speed. I think I'd rather just wait personally.
I don't remember all the things alterations are used for for vendor recipes. Yeah, so a lot of people are probably going to ask why I'm doing this with Inquisitor instead of Juggernaut, since a lot of people played the Juggernaut version last time. Um, a lot of people are unaware that I played Inquisitor Righteous Fire for a very long time, and with Juggernaut's rework, I wanted to try out Juggernaut because it's new. But now that I've played a lot of Juggernaut, I want to go back to Inquisitor. I really enjoy it. They're both extremely strong builds with different defensive layers, and you can check out more on the website on pox.net. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some of this. So I can also grab these swords because we're going to go to another waypoint right here. There's a waypoint right in the front of the lower prison. And we can just vendor all of this stuff again. We won't be picking up this much loot in general. It's just that uh, it helps get some of these transmutations we're going to need for later. I'm also going to go ahead and ID the boots again. Still no movement speed, that's okay. All right, so over here we grab Combustion Support. This is extremely strong. I'll be replacing Arcane Surge with it. Get rid of all of this stuff. This shield we can keep, we might need the colors later. So I'm gonna take the shield and just slap it right in here. Good. Hello. Don't think there's anything too important here. Um, we do have Life Tap in here. And we are going to need life tap, so I'm just going to grab one and start leveling it. Farewell. Just leave it alone. Not too big of a deal. Let's search NN for runner. Nothing. Farewell. Now I'll be skipping the lab trials just because it will take an extra like 20 minutes to do the lab trials. Uh, maybe, well, not 20 minutes, a bit less, but feel free to do the lab trials at any point. It's not really important right now. In fact, with Inquisitor, I don't even ascend until quite a bit later compared to Juggernaut. Now, we're coming across Brutus soon. It's not a bad idea to have an extra MP flask. A lot of people who don't feel comfortable with rolling magma and kind of just spam it and get a little scared might want to have two MP flasks. Um, so there is absolutely no harm in that. Is that a blue pack in there? No, they're shiny. Since we're frost blinking a lot, I'm actually going to go ahead and put the arcane surge with my frost blink. So the arcane surge is currently, let's see, where are you? Right over, well, that's the Frost Blink, and there's the Arcane Surge. And we don't want Life Tap, because those literally don't work together. Some blue bombs. Some boots. Large empty Flask. How nice. Put that on. All right, time to go to Brutus. Your answer's here, for some extra single target, you can also grab Light of Divinity. I probably won't be getting it for quite a while. And we actually found Life and Regen. I'm actually gonna go ahead and equip those. Okay, if you're concerned, you can drop a portal ahead of time. This is going to be like the first boss we encounter. So what I like to do is aim the rolling magma directly in front of the flame wall. Um, we want to aim like as, kind of like as close as possible. Not necessarily as close as possible, but we want, we don't want to overshoot on the boss. We'd rather undershoot so it hits multiple times. When he does that big slam from back and forth, you can frost blink behind him and you're kind of good to go. 
So, let's go through the Warden's Chambers. Alright, perfect. And let's go ahead and teleport back. I'm gonna ID this shield, because it could get plus one fire. Okay, it's double spell damage roll. It's actually not bad. It's probably better than... It's actually still not better than that. Holy. The flat damage is just very strong. Uh, and let's ID these boots. You did not get movement speed. That's fine. So I'm gonna vendor this, 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 and this one. Let's keep the belt. When we get an extra wisdom, we're gonna go ahead and identify it. And uh, we'll probably use this ring for Mervale. Now, we should also be able to get Leap Slam here and Vitality. So I'll buy this. Let's go get Leap Slam. Hello. Leap Slam costs just a transmute, no problem. Slap that on there. Oh, that's right. We can't Leap Slam with this. Just kidding. No Leap Slam. If you want to go faster, uh, use a Scepter. Scepters will allow you to Leap Slam. In fact, I think I am going to intentionally sabotage my damage just to Leap Slam because I'm a Leap Slam enjoyer. So I'm going to just use a random... Th this is not really very good. I'm just slapping it on this because it could get some good modifiers. And it got like 1 to 5 Lightning Dispels, for example. So that's good enough for me. So now I'm going to take the Flame Wall, put it over there, uh, and we're good to go. Let's be a Leap Slam enjoyer. Vitality goes there. Perfect. Let me just fix my links after redoing some stuff. So Leap Slam goes here. Turn off that. Perfect. And if you are Leap Slamming, some nice things to know is that you can kind of use your Frost Blink right towards the end of the Leap Slam. You can also use it to help change direction. Here's a large Life Flask. We're going to go ahead and replace this little baby one. If you feel a bit slow, don't forget, this is where you can spec into precision to get some bonus attack speed and cast speed. I have Flame Totem in the POB. It's in there if you want to look through it. I personally just don't care for it on Inquisitor. I have enough damage. Leather Belt and Greater Life Flask. Okay. This is already better than this because we're not doing physical. Yo, Alkaiser. Thank you for the raid, friend. We have very minimal chat activity right now. We're doing a YouTube campaign run. So, sorry ahead of time for everyone who is joining in. So, we ended up finding a Cone Helmet here. So, one of the nice things about this helmet is that it's got red red so what we can actually do here is instead of making our leap slam cost mp we're going to make it cost life so we're going to take that leap slam and we're going to take that life tap which is uh actually where is that life tap here it is slap it on there and we're going to switch our helmet now the reasoning for doing that is we have vitality which is giving us life regen so vitality will basically make it so we can nullify that cost Here's the ship graveyard that we're going to need, so I'm going to walk by it. Kind of like what we did earlier in the passage. Okay, same thing. I like killing essence mobs because it's basically like a free crafting resource, so this is pretty convenient for us. Alright, grab that. Let's continue. We can slap that on our shield. Okay, now let's go back to Lion Eyes and go right into the ship graveyard. Ranch. 
there's our level up. I think this is the dead end, right? Oh, it's not? It is not. Okay. You actually don't even have to kill this person. You can actually just take this and then say yoink and goodbye. And now we gotta go find Fairgraves. gonna drop uh, we could sell that but I'm too lazy to go back eight steps okay just kidding I have to go back anyway so I don't know if it's gonna be here or if it's gonna be here I'm guessing it's closer to the waypoint so let's go closer to the waypoint So now <clears throat> we're going to take a little bit of a detour. We're going to grab some life, which I don't really care for right now. But this is going to provide minimal respecking for later. So this is the reason we're taking this route to go up here instead of, say, coming out through here. I also don't really feel like Inquisitor struggles at all. We have so much damage already. Bronze Scepter. I'm going to grab this stuff. Back to town. Okay, um, so here we get Flame Surge, I believe. Where is Flame Surge? Do we actually have to buy the Flame Surge? I think we do. We'll buy the Flame Surge. Okay, uh, identify this this uh, Scepter. Maybe it's better. And uh, it's like literally the same thing, I think. Yeah, so I could wield it, but we're fine. So it's okay. Let's just get rid of the rest of the stuff. I would normally ID this belt because it could be better than the leather belt, but it's really not a big deal. There's our skill point. Yes. Now let's look for Flame Surge, which is right here. So we're going to go kind of overkill here. So we're going to do Flame Surge with Life Tap. And uh, I think we can get Efficacy. Efficacy for one Transmute. All right. Now we have some... We got some real damage numbers here. We do also have a singular sapphire ring, so whenever we find an ID scroll, we want to ID this. Primarily because the boss we're about to fight is very heavy cold damage. There's another chromatic orb. Could also get another life tap for our leap slam since now we're using it for flame surge you also don't have to use the life tap for flame surge especially not this early but a little bit later like quite a bit later our mp management is going to be a very tight so this is where getting used to flame surge on life tap does not hurt Now, what Flame Surge does is it basically gives it, it gives you a massive bonus damage multiplier if the target is ignited. So our, our goal is to fish for an ignite with the rolling magma, which has very good ignite chance with our combustion and elemental proliferation. And that's really only going to be needed for single target. You could probably ditch the flame wall at this point. I'll even attempt to do Merveil without the flame wall, just because we're minimizing our buttons, which makes it just feel better. Now, another thing is when you come in here, um, there are these explody squids, they, these little red ones here that will blow your character up. So make sure you don't let them surround you and explode because that's literally what they do. They just charge at you and try to explode.
think you can also follow these like sirens to get to the boss. Always forget. Okay, and you can put a portal out here if you would like. So there's our ignite. Now we're gonna flame surge. Actually, is flame surge even worth it here? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, I'll be honest, I don't think you should life tap it this early, just because mana is not really a problem right now. So it'd definitely be stronger with the Arcane Surge, but we don't have another triple blue, so it's fine. Actually, I think I do on my shield. It's still fine nonetheless, though. Damage is really good. got to be careful when she does her scream there. She can massively slow you down, and then the Explodey Squids can basically kill you. Alright, she is dead. We want to make sure we pick up this Scepter. Let's go on. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and... I didn't even end up using this ring, that's funny. So twisted. So we've got a shield, and we've got a wand. Those are our two big ones. Wait, did I say a shield and... Shield and scepter. We're also going to need a bunch of... We're going to need a bunch of transmutations for a little bit later. So this is primarily why we have not been identifying the gear that we're selling. We also don't have enough wisdom scrolls for all of that stuff. Okay. 20 MP, and this doesn't help us. The 2 to 27 lightning damage is only two attacks because it does not specify spells. Oh, let's just get rid of this stuff here. Uh, okay. Oh, I should have actually kept the shield for the the colors, but we have this one here, which is fine. So it's not a big deal. Now, Crystal Scepters are going to start appearing now. I think we could even get them a little earlier. Um, we can also, since somehow we haven't found Movement Speed Boots, we can go back and check for uh, Movement Speed Boots. Oh. I don't remember if we got our Fair Gave's quest point. We did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So I am now going to go to the old fields. Now, there may be one thing in the POB. I don't know if it shows it. Chat may have to confirm for me. Actually, I can look at it. Let's see. 12 to 30. Okay, yeah. So there is, um, there is like, one thing that I may... I don't have it in the POB because it's a little tricky to explain. So we can pick up heralds in this act. Now, the Heralds will be used for only a small amount of time because we'll be using them for this act and then we'll be dropping them later. So, if you want to do more damage, which I would recommend, you go ahead and pick up Herald of Ash. Um, I don't actually know which one is stronger. Should the Herald of Thunder or Herald of Ash would be the big choices. I need wisdom. Wink. I mean, you never want to overshoot that rolling magma. It's always better to shoot it in front of you because you could miss the target like I did there. That's yeah, not a bad shield. Give some Ellie res. Your 
trust is the only reward I Ooh, Greaves, maybe we get some movement speed. Just kidding, maybe we don't. I don't actually know if Templar gets faster attacks. It might. That's another option. You get faster attacks in the in Act One. You could absolutely link it up if you have the colors for it. You don't. Oh, I see. Here are some beasts. These guys can be a little scary. I would never try to stand in their face. These are. Basically, it's just bestiary, and there's a bunch of different effects that they do and spam you with, and uh, it is not a good time. Hey, look, Jade Amulet and Boots. Also take this right here. So we don't actually have... Well, I mean, we do have a gold amulet, so we can just keep the amulet for now. Here is the lap trial, so we're gonna skip that. Maybe we get movement speed. Maybe we don't, that's okay. One day, we'll get some movement speed. So many people are gonna start with RF, the items are gonna be expensive. That's why you just go to my website and learn how to craft the basic items. It's not too difficult, I promise. If I can do it in SSF, you can do it in Trade League. Looks like we are hitting int requirements. However, that's okay because, 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 I'll be honest, I'm not actually sure. So we're going to get intelligence once we come up here, which we're actually pathing to. So basically our next level would give us intelligence. If you want to get that intelligence now, you can get, like, Light of Divinity. That's another 10 intelligence. Yeah, I do have Int on Boots, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Let's get that Ignite, and then we can Flame Surge away. All right, so now we should get our heralds. Fine, don't we? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to take Herald of Ash, uh, which is 9% more spell fire. There's also Herald of Thunder, which is flat damage. I feel like Herald of Thunder would actually be better here, but I truly don't really know. What is the added damage on Flame Surge? Let's see. It is uh, 190%. I'm actually going to try Herald of Thunder out. Yeah, so it takes 41 int, but we're going to get 10 int soon. That's not too big of a deal. So let's go grab Herald of Thunder. Again, you can grab either of these. It, it doesn't matter too much. We're going to use it for a very small amount of time. There's also a Crystal Scepter located here. This is the Scepter base I would like to use. There's also a Scepter here that grants 6 to 12 fire damage to spells. This Scepter is far stronger than my current one and takes two transmutations. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and actually grab this scepter here. So minus two transmutations. And we're going to slap that on instead of what we currently have. Good. Vitality can go up there. And let's go ahead and put these points in. And we're going to get in right here. I don't know, I'm concerned that 9% more fire is not better than the flat damage, but again, they're such minimal values, I don't think it matters too much. We're also going to be using Righteous Fire here very soon. Um, so we are level 16, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So by 23, actually a little less because we'll get some, we'll get a passive point here soon, uh, we'll be running Righteous Fire.
energy drop. Ooh, some boots. Okay. Also gonna grab these because we are uh we're gonna need a lot of transmutation soon. Okay. Tap that. So, over here is a boss. You can tell by the broken road. You don't have to do this now if you're feeling a little bit weak, but she's not too difficult. The next boss we kill is going to be called Weaver, um, so not this one. And they will drop, well, they'll give us access to new support gems that are very strong. Now we can get our int and we can level up our gems again. Also use that Herald of Thunder that we purchased before. So let's turn it on. Pretty noticeable damage increase. Went from 296 to 343. Oh, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. This is good. Another thing you can do. Why is it hot? Oh, right, because Juggernauts need Lapis Amulet. That's funny. Actually, I mean, we kind of needed the Lapis Amulet, too, so there's no harm in that. Let's kill him. Now, right over here, we can get an extra skill point in Act 1 from that. So, what I'm going to do here, and you don't have to do this, but since my inventory is full, we're going to do something a little different. So, I'm actually going to go to Prisoner's Gate right here. I'm going to open up a portal, which will take us to Act 1 because of the Prisoner's Gate. We just unlocked it now. We'll identify these boots, which finally got movement speed. Yes. We're going to go ahead and vendor the rest of this stuff. Go now, ahead. I'm going to keep the Quartz Scepter here and the Spirit Shield here. We have two armor scraps in our inventory that we'll vendor for Wisdoms. We'll then identify the Jade Amulet. We'll equip it, which gives us Dexterity, which allows us to use our boots. We'll then vendor the boots and the Gold Amulet. We'll then use the, the uh, Wisdoms to identify the Quartz Scepter and the Shield. They don't really do much, so we're going to leave that alone. I don't care about this Mana Forged Arrow, and I don't care about the Lapis Amulet, so let's keep it there. We are going to need some Iron Rings, so there's an Iron Ring here for three, three Wisdoms. I can't afford that right now, so I am going to just leave it alone. Okay. Oh, did I get my skill point? I didn't actually pay attention. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So now we can actually come through here, and we can just hit the prisoner's gate, which then shoots us back through here. Okay. Now, we have two options. A, we can get more damage right now, which would be Divine Judgment. Or B, we can rush Righteous Fire. I will go ahead and rush Righteous Fire because the more you see me struggle, the more realistic it looks. So, now that we have killed Alira, we know that Alira, at least for us, is on the left side. So that means Weaver is on the right. This one and this one. That other iron ring. Pretty good. 
Does the iron ring red gem work if it's magic? Or does it have to be... Does it have to be white? It works? Cool. That's the next thing we're gonna do. So if you want more buttons to press, you can still use Flame Wall, right? Flame Wall will still give us damage, and it actually works out well since my uh, Flame Surge is life tapped. We got pretty unlucky here. This pack is Fire and Ignite resistant, but it's totally fine. Our damage is pretty good. Not a problem. gonna just port out okay good mm -hmm. so since we don't have too many wisdoms i'm gonna vendor these i'm gonna id the one because it could be good of course it's another cold one it has 28 burning on it actually that's a really good one um a little too strong let's vendor it okay good so now if you remember those iron rings, we're going to pull out the iron rings and that glacial hammer. If you sold your glacial hammer, it's totally fine or dropped it or whatever. All we really have to do is go to Nessa here and buy another red gem for one wisdom. It doesn't matter which one it is. So now that we have <clears throat> two iron rings and two red gems, you can actually vendor them together to get ruby rings, which we're going to want later. So now we're going to have these two ruby rings. We're going to hold these on the side right here. All right, we also get our Weaver reward. So let's go ahead and yoink Elemental Focus here. Ellie Focus is extremely strong for Flame Surge. I would probably remove the Life Tap here, I think, just for the Ellie Focus, because uh, I don't really know how much I care about it. I don't really know. The other option is getting Control Destruction or the Rolling Magma, I think. I don't fully remember. I'll just take the Ellie Focus because we're going to need it anyway. So now I'm actually going to take this shield, swap it with this current one, and just do Efficacy, Ellie Focus, and uh, Flame Surge. There's a couple of different links you can use, and it's fine either way. I'll take the Life Tap and put it with the Leap Slam in my boots here, since we have this combo. Uh, and yeah, we're pretty much good to go. It's also a Righteous Fire Gem we're going to go ahead and grab. I think it's one alteration. So it is right here, so it's going to yoink our alteration. We're going to put it in our weapon swap and just have it level with us. If you don't do this step, it's okay. So now we're going to go ahead and fight Creighton. The reasoning we don't want to help bandits for this build is because uh, two skill points is far more versatile with what we're able to do with it. And just, I would say, better. Have more control over it. It's also a bit expensive to respect the bandit choice, whereas two skill points is just <clears throat> two regret orbs. I'm going to go ahead and pour it out. Okay, so now we're going against the infamous Oak. That's going to be our next step here. Now, Oak can be very tricky for a lot of players because his sustain is incredibly high. So if you're new, there's nothing wrong with before we go to Oak, you can go ahead and go to the crossroads and run down here. This is where one of the other lab trials is. There's also the Den, which is a side area here. It gives, I forgot what it gives, maybe a rare belt. I don't fully remember, but there's nothing wrong with doing that. As a caster, majority of our damage is gonna is gonna come from uh, gem levels. The higher level we are, 
the more experience our gems have gotten since they scale with us. So whenever you get the gems, uh, the gem breakpoints, you do a lot more damage. This is why it's very important to keep them at max level. Support gems are a little different, but we want to level those with the exception of uh, a few that are in the POB. Oh, you get an extra Quicksilver from Den. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. There is Oak. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off our Shrine for this. You should not turn it off if you have it. Okay, and let's get our first point into Holy Fire. Down he goes. I'd probably kill these archers. They uh, they actually do quite a bit of damage, and it only takes one rolling magma to kill them. If you're looking for extra help, whenever Oak does his cry, it's, it's a war cry called Enduring Cry, it gives him a surge of regeneration. You can also go back to Act 1, and I believe pick up a Frost Bomb gem, and you can recycle that into your rotation. It will mitigate his self-healing by about 50%. Now across one of these edges, I'm guessing it's the opposite way, because it's usually the, the opposite of where I go, um, is the next, well, the area to the Vol Ruins, I think. Also going to pick up this two-stone ring, and these to Vendor. Where is it? Oh, actually, no, it's right here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Grab the waypoint. Hit the tree roots. I'm actually going to go back now, because we can grab two bonus skill points for killing all the bandits. So now we can take Fire Multi, Holy Fire, 1% regen per second per one capped Fire Res. We have six transmutations to our name. That's going to be very important for what we're about to do. Um, we're not really using the, the blue blue on our gloves too much, so I'll ID these. They rolled Fire Res. They're kind of okay. Well, maybe we'll use them. I'm not sure. I'll put them right over here. I'm going to go ahead and vendor the rest of this stuff. We don't need it. Now I'm going to take out those two ruby rings we have. We're going to go to our hideout. Now at our hideout here, you're going to have a crafting bench. And this is a very important part about Path of Exile. So we're going to take ruby ring one and we're going to click fire res. So we'll have this craft here for level 12 for one transmutation. Craft it. Put your next res on. Craft it. What's your fire res? Doesn't matter. Keep crafting. So I'm going to take this helmet I have and put fire res. I'm going to take this shield I have, and I'm going to put fire res. I'm going to look at these boots, hold alt, they have a suffix open, I'm going to put fire res. I'm going to look at my weapon, I can't craft fire res on this. Let's swap this one, let's swap this one. I have another transmutation, I'm going to take my three link and put fire res. Now why am I doing this? Actually for the body armor I could have alt at first, but the reason I'm doing this is we want to get as much fire res as possible. So we actually have 198 fire res, and you need to ask yourself, well, why do you want 198 fire res? Here's why. When I weapon swap now and I take out this Righteous Fire Gem, and I put this Righteous Fire Gem on, I can already run the Righteous Fire Gem. And the reasoning for this is because of this mastery. Regenerate one life per second for each one cap fire res. So our regen is 198, and we have how much fire res again on our character? 198. We're not even running Vitality. Let's turn that back on. If I were to say, remove this fire mastery, let me go ahead and show real fast. I'm gonna use one regret orb from here. I'm gonna unspec this mastery, and you'll notice we start to die really fast. You put that point back in, you regenerate really fast. So that is gonna be our primary way of sustaining righteous fire. So let's go ahead and get out of here. You can keep throwing more fire res across your gear, there is no harm. We're in a pretty good spot right now, so I'm going to just keep it like this. So there's also that elemental focus. I'm going to snag another elemental focus. You don't necessarily need to. I'm just going to. And <clears throat> with this Ellie focus, we're going to use Righteous Fire Elemental Focus. So we have Herald of Thunder here for some damage. We have Flame Wall. I'm going to drop Flame Wall. 
and put Frost Blink here. Actually, I can still keep Flame Wall and put it in my boots because of the White Socket. Okay. So, now let's get our Keybinds good. I like putting RF on my second bar, so that way, whenever I enter a new zone, my brain is holding control and pressing E. So as I'm holding, well, now I'm pressing E like this. It turns on. When I let go, it's gone. But it stays on the whole time, right? So let's get to it. Now your, your RF may not do a bunch of damage at this point, but that's okay. Because it's effectively giving us an extra support gem on both of our skills. So that would be for the Rolling Magma and for the Flame Surge. And the reasoning for that is because if you read the RF buff, it grants 20% more spell damage. So that's very similar to like a level 1 Control Destruction, except it doesn't increase the mana cost and it does damage on top of that. So if we walk up to this rare, for example, he's probably going to get deleted. And he got deleted. So there's like a 0% chance that you need to use Flame Wall at this point. If you want to, though, there is no harm in doing it. Remember that RF does not scale with spell damage, so we are going to want to pivot at some point into a... Um, we're we're going to want to pivot into stacking sources of fire damage, fire damage over time multiplier, damage over time multiplier, burning damage. Fire to spells will not work for RF. However... Damage to spells is still good because it's our primary form of single target right now because RF is not really our single target. Our single target is Flame Surge, um, assisted with Rolling Magma. If you happen to have a 3-link, though... Ooh, let's, this is some good loot. Let's just take it. You can also put RF with efficacy along with the uh, elemental focus. That's another option. So I could replace the Flame Surge links with it. In fact, you know what? I probably will. And then I'll put Life Tap back on Flame Surge. That's a good idea. I like that idea. Let's do that. Now that we have so much regeneration, we don't really have to worry too much about the life consumption. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the Ellie Focus. Actually, the Ellie Focus stays here. So we're going to take out Righteous Fire. We're going to put Flame Surge here. We're going to go ahead and take Life Tap from here. Slap it on there. We're going to put RF in here. So we have RF, Elemental Focus, Efficacy, and Ellie Focus, Flame Surge, and Life Tap. And then we could grab another Life Tap for the Leap Slam. It's not really a big deal. don't really need the arcane surge at this point so i will be dropping it there is no harm in keeping it though you can still keep it for uh you can still keep it for like your frost blink but i find it to be a little annoying to manage the links and it's just not really a big deal uh definitely want to hit that waypoint i'm going to be skipping it and then i'll complain when i disconnect Oops. so we're kind of in like cruising mode right now um, we don't really have to worry too much about picking up a lot of other gear. The main reason is if we pick up a new piece of gear, we want to make sure it has fire res on it so we can do that swap. We also want to make sure that it's the right colors. So this is where the game can get a little tricky. I'll be vendoring most of my gear until I start to struggle. Um, there will still be a few things like this shield I will pick up. Um, there's a chance it could have like plus one fire gems on it, for example. There you go, plus one lightning, but also has 39% spell damage. That spell damage is huge single target for our uh, for our flame surge and our uh, righteous or not righteous fire flame surge and uh, rolling magma. Little too strong this early. We'll be leaving that on the floor. Maybe someone else in ray class could pick it up. Okay, from here we're actually going to go ahead and get some more damage. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and grab this long staff. We're going to need some of these chromatics later. Chromatics can help. So our inventory is getting a little cluttered yet again. Uh, so I'm probably going to go back. Now, normally I would throw all of this in a tab, but I'm trying not to use my tabs for this run because uh, inevitably I will go on autopilot and want to like put everything into 
the designated tabs. I must have time to gather with the will. That is some spooky damage. That's uh, lightning. We probably have very bad lightning res. Let's take a look at our lightning res. It's pretty bad. We'll fix a bit of that in the next act. Let's use this waypoint, go back, and vendor some stuff. I will ID the scepter. Maybe it's it's not good. Okay, spoiler. We're not really using too much of our links here, so I will identify the helmet. And it's got some life. It's kind of okay. But the fire res, eh, I don't care that much about it, so I'll vendor it. Okay, get this stuff out of there. Uh, let's see here. I don't want the Arcane Surge. I do not want these rings. I don't want this ring. I'm just going to get rid of the MP potions. Uh, the Apex we're going to use as a quest item. Let's organize this a little. These are basically our pretend alchemy orbs, so we'll keep them. So another thing you can actually do right now, you can look in the vendor for the gear that you have. So it also pop up on the loot filter, but see how my gloves are like blue, blue, red? If I find a pair of blue, blue, red gloves in here, I can actually just buy it out and then alk it with one of these. The term alking is basically just turning it rare. So we're using a, an essence to just guarantee it to be rare, right? These have virtually no value at, at all at any point in time because they're so low tier. Now, Vol is going to be a bit scary. Vol does very high lightning damage. So um, you can actually add a little bit of lightning res. Getting like 40-50% makes a very big difference. Um, since we have open pieces, you can absolutely do that. We don't need fire res on everything, for example. Now, there is one thing I would like to state about Inquisitor here. So, Juggernaut gets a very big power spike from their first lab. Uh, I believe it's called Untiring, and it gives like 40% increased life regenerate, which is huge for the flat amount of regen we get this early. Unfortunately, on Inquisitor, we get Consecrated Ground when you are stationary, which is good, but not really stationary very long. So, what I actually do is I skip the first lab entirely, and I don't actually run Labyrinth until I'm ready to do Cruel Labyrinth, which is around mid-50s. The reasoning for that is the second point in Labyrinth for us is Pious Path, which makes it so the Consecrated Ground lingers for four seconds. So that way, whenever we basically perform any action, whether in this setup it would be Leap Slam, Flame Wall, um, Rolling Magma, it does not matter. When we stop for even 0.1 of a nanosecond, it will refresh that Consecrated Ground on us, thus creating a much smoother experience. So I completely ditch it uh, until second lab. Another thing is, Inquisitor gets to be a bit more unique here. Highest Path also makes it so your life regen is equal to your ES regen, so we actually get an extra buffer because we can sustain our energy shield. go. I think this is our almost Divine Judgment. Divine Judgment is 50% Ellie damage, which is incredible. I actually like to pick up these scepters here. Um, I like to pick them up because uh, you could potentially... Well, actually, that's not true. Sorry, that was a lie. Um, the, the loot filter highlights blue scepters. White scepters don't really do much for you. If you have a whole bunch of extra transmutations, you can throw a transmutation on them, but I would not do that on every scepter. I would just wait for the blue ones to pop up. Or the, the rare ones like this. The rare ones are good too. Okay. 
I'm gonna ID this. I don't really care too much for it. Let's see, uh, maybe this helmet. This helmet actually has uh, cold and lightning res, that's not too bad. It's 12% fire, it's also kind of okay. There is our divine judgment. Hey, look, trapper boots. Yeah, that's a little too unethical. We're not going to use those trapper boots. These would be incredibly strong because when we throw uh, when we throw fire trap, we would get basically 15% movement speed. So these would be 30% movement speed boots. Unfortunately, a little too strong. So uh, we'll just leave them there for someone else to pick up. Birthplace of the Templar, a fitting place to put things right. Portal screen. Give me that. Okay. Um, so soon we're gonna get to uh go to town and we're gonna get to change some of our links up. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh just remove my flame wall, because I don't need flame wall at all. So I'm just gonna drop it on the floor. I'm gonna make sure you wait for Clarissa here, otherwise you're gonna have to come back for her. I'm gonna just talk to her, and that's really about it. We're going to get ready to drop our um, Herald of Thunder. Oh. Wow. Oh, what are these? Hey, those look really good. These, uh, these gloves here, they have life. They have attack speed, which means faster, uh, faster leap slamming. Those, those are really good. Unfortunately, they don't have the right colors, but I think we could we could figure this out. So I'm actually going to portal, come back over here, and just get rid of this other stuff in our inventory. So we don't need any of this. Um, maybe we'll keep that. Maybe we will use that. For now, let's just get rid of this. We don't want it. Get rid of that. Sure thing. Okay. So, <clears throat> these gloves are actually very good. I would like to use these gloves. Uh, so, what we're going to go ahead and do here is we are going to have to drop a link somewhere. I will probably drop mm, maybe a link off Flame Surge. I'm not really sure. Maybe a link off of RF, actually. Uh, let's, see, let's drop a link off of RF, I think. So, we are going to take the, let's see, RF plus... Elemental focus, and we're going to put RF here with Ellie focus here, or well, there. We're going to take off these gloves. We're going to put on these gloves. So now we have life tap with, let's see, how are we going to do this actually? Am I drunk? I think I'm drunk. So we're going to remove the life tap setup. Yeah, we're going to just go efficacy, flame surge, Ellie focus, right? And then I will put life tap up here with frost blink and leap slam so those are now on life the vitality can sit right there and now we just have a good pair of gloves pretty much so we did lose a little bit of damage on rf the trade-off is we're a bit more tanky we have more overall res and we're faster so that's a trade-off that i intentionally chose based off of the gearing Now, I'm going to save a few points here. Um, the reasoning for saving the points is I'm too lazy to open up my POB to see exactly where I want to go. Uh, I know that there are three potential locations. Number one, I can take a little bit of extra AoE right here for your Righteous Fire. Number two, I can go ahead and take the Aura Nodes, um, but I don't know if I really need them yet. So that would be Sovereignty located right here. 
and number three, I can just start moving down towards the regeneration here. And the reasoning for that is this flat regeneration we have from the mastery is nice, but it will only last for so long until we get that ascendancy. So we really want to make sure that we can retain our survivability, so we don't want to neglect our regeneration. I think I'm going to go towards Hardy, because I don't really feel like I'm struggling. What I'm going to do first, though, is I am going to make sure that our mana feels good when I get our new aura. So what I mean by our new aura is we're going to be dropping Herald of Thunder pretty much after we kill Piety here. And we are going to be getting Purity of Elements. Purity of Elements will give us bonus regeneration, immunity to Shock, Freeze, Chill, and Ignite. You don't have to worry because Ignite is not part of RF. RF is considered Burn, so we, like, RF still works, right? I think we actually are going over. man and a living machine there's your truth heretic enough of this all right i'm just gonna log off here perfect bring me back something so, oh yes, we get our curse now too. Oh yes, okay, so here we're gonna take flammability. I'm gonna put flammability up here instead of frost blink, and I'll just put frost blink by itself. Okay, get the keys from Clarissa. Let's put our life flask in here. I like putting the flammability with life tap because it costs so much MP. Don't do anything I would. Greeting. Uh, and then let's go back to Clarissa. Yes. And by Purity of Elements, located here for an alteration. We're just going to directly swap our Herald of Thunder for that. We can vendor the Herald of Thunder. We are never going to use it again. Now we're going into the sewers. Sewers are actually pretty dangerous because there are monsters there that use Discharge. I'm pretty sure they do very high uh, lightning damage, um, but that's okay because if you got a little bit of lightning res before you fought um, Vol, you're good, and if you have Purity of Elements, you are also good because this gives us bonus res. Now, since the mana is very tight here, we have two options. Um, so let me explain the two options you have. Number one, um, you can actually spec into a... Is it, do they have the Vitality Mastery still? I think they removed it, maybe. Okay, so you can spec into the Reservation Wheel here. Um, we're going to need this late game anyway, and this will help with your mana management so it's not as bad. So I am just for now going to deviate and take these four points into Sovereignty, and then I'll probably move down and grab Hardy and Barbarism, and then probably Amplify, but remember the order is not necessarily the most important, but to prevent mana management screwing up, we're going to just take this. So our Ellie Res is looking okay. We're uh, 218, 46, and 55. My mana is spent. This is also a spot where we are now going to start looking for uh, four links. So four links are on the filter. Um, the nice advantage of four links is for both of our single targets, we will want to put life tap on, and that will make it so we don't really have to worry too much about the mana management. Here's that Fire and Ignite pack. They're already dead. You remember when we couldn't deal with them? I do. Screw you, Mudflats. All right, so this is an example of a blue scepter that's on my filter that I like to identify at chance at getting some good stuff. If not, it's okay. Usually you're not going to get good stuff, so. Oh, uh, another Ritual Scepter. Take that one. Cool. Plus one physical. Wow. 
That could have been fire. If that was plus one fire, that weapon would be good all the way to, like, yellow maps. It's also the mention uh, of a guard skill I never talked about. So if you saw there on the floor, Steel Skin, you can pick up Steel Skin or Molten Shell. I think Steel Skin will be better right now because we don't have good armor scaling. Um, I'm not using one because I feel that our defenses are, excuse me, are kind of crazy. We have so much regeneration and nothing is going to just one-shot you at this level. Oh yeah, I also forgot about our curse. I keep forgetting about the uh, flammability. Going after a question in chat here, I am confused. Why are you running a shield? Aren't two scepters better for the flat spell damage and faster with leap slam? So this, the purpose of this video is more of informative content. It's not about going as fast as possible. The faster you go, the harder it is for people to follow. So I've explained pretty much your itemization and your choices in pretty much any way you want to play, right? You've got the option of shield for shield charge. You've got the option of just going with whatever drops. The whole point of this is to show that Inquisitor is flexible. Inquisitor has a lot more damage than Juggernaut, so you don't have to play a specific way. For players who are looking to get through the content as fast as humanly possible, uh, this is unfortunately not there for them, right? This is for people who want to kind of just learn the game. Oh, looks like we're hitting those end issues again. We can fix that, no problem. Okay, there is a waypoint here that we are going to want to aim for. So let's go ahead and look for that waypoint. And totally kill the essence mob. My inventory is getting a little cluttered right now, so I am just skipping it. Um, I think he is down here for the waypoint. So let's see. All right, let's portal out. If you acquired these three busts from the sewers, you can actually trade them in um, for a skill point. So we're going to talk to Hargan over here. Bring me back something. Good. And uh, we're going to just vendor the rest of this stuff. I do want to use this, but... but like that's actually really good but the colors don't work and honestly we're kind of fine so this is like a massive upgrade we could save it in case we like four link it you could use your only fusing right now to try to four link it i don't know if that would be worth it especially because it's not really colored another option would be um coming over here and looking for a four link so we could check real fast if there are any four links I don't think I see any at the moment. Well, there's this one, but those are not the right colors. Those are actually fire trap colors. Interesting. Not not actually fire trap colors, but the base is fire trap. So I'll actually snag these and hold them for when we go fire trap. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use. Oops, a daisy. Are only fusing here on this i would not do this but let's see what happens okay that's why you don't want to do that yes let's go ahead and bender that goodbye Good luck, our loot filter will flag 
our four links we'll find them i believe in the filter believe in the loot filter but again <clears throat> there will be someone in the comments most likely who will ping the regex that you can use to look for the colors in the uh shop so that would be like blue 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 red would be the primary one Am I not using regex? I never use regex, so it's hard for me to remember to use it. Yep, our mana pool is officially good to go now after taking that node, so that's really nice. We're also going to go ahead and uh, drop our rolling magma soon so that's pretty nice we're gonna switch to armageddon brand um that's coming up in a little bit Ooh, giant life flask let's swap for all the newer players who are trying to ask me questions right now unfortunately i'm in the middle of a youtube recording this is a very long recording you can see it in the title of the stream um, if you are confused on anything and trying to get me to clarify, just go to my website, pox.net, check out the FAQ, and you can see everything there. I promise. Here's a four link. So this is what most four links are going to look like on the filter. Um, the reasoning this four link pops up is it's a little hard for me to differentiate all the different four links to pick up. So I just put all four links on, basically. That'll, that'll flag everything. Okay, we found our sulfite. This is what we need. So now we're actually hitting some intelligence requirements. So we can either A, go back to our hideout and craft a little bit of intelligence, or B, we can simply put intelligence on our gear. Or, or sorry, on the tree. So again, if you want some early int, you can take like Light of Divinity. Um, we will later path to Sanctity. And then I think that's pretty much... That's pretty much it for the intelligence right now. We're also going to come up here later and grab like acrimony and some other stuff, but that's not really a big deal right now. So I'm going to just go ahead and go to town and put int on my belt. Actually, can you put int on a belt? You might not be able to. You actually can't properly put int on a belt. It's a hybrid. So uh, let's just put it on like uh, our gloves, for example. Can I put it here? Yeah. So... Right here, one augmentation for intelligence. We're good to go. We're smart again. Level up our skills. We know that stuff. We don't want it. Good. So I believe now we are going to aim to come down here for Hardy and Barbarism. My damage feels pretty good. I'm pretty happy with my character. Me, personally, I think I would start coming towards Acrimony for three, re two reasons. Number one, if I path here a little early, I get that intelligence that I want, um, and I feel totally fine with my survivability, but we're just going to swing down here anyway because we're going to need it later. Okay, let's go. So, back to Battlefront, and we're going to go ahead and run north. I still pick up these Bone Spirit Shields, even though we don't run minion damage on this version. Um, the reasoning for not running minion damage is Inquisitor naturally will have a lot more damage than Juggernaut. The initial pathing gives us damage, so that's right here, and our Ascendancy gives us damage. So there's no real reason to go out of our way to get more. I mean, you absolutely can if you want to. I don't find it to be necessary. Oop, got stuck. You also don't have to worry too much about Frostblink. Frostblink um, will take a lot of int compared to some of the later stuff we're running. So if it 
if the int demand is too high on your frost blink you don't need to level it anymore we're gonna want to use a level one frost blink once we enter maps anyway These two bosses here are very squishy, but you gotta be careful because they curse you and bring down your resistances, although we're probably fine with our stats. Remember, the essentially every time we level up, we get a little bit of base life. On top of that, as we start to improve our gear, we're naturally going to get more life. That doesn't mean we're going to get more fire res. So if you remember in Act 2, we were about 200, I think like 190 life regen without vitality. We are probably at 250 now, but a lot of that comes from the vitality, right? So again, there will be a point where we will not be able to sustain off of this flat value from the mastery. So it's important to make sure we capitalize on that by coming down here and grabbing Hardy and then two points into Barbarism. Won't happen now, but we're just setting ourselves up for like, you know, in the 40s. Okay, so two options here. Um, Dex Amulet is going to be good for Fire Trap. Int will help us out, but we don't really need Int because we can take Int on the north side. So I'll take the Dex Amulet. Alright, looks good. So coming over here, you can grab the very strong, I think, uh, recipe here. It basically gives you flat fire damage to spells. So if you want more single target, that is your absolute craft that you would do. You can also do wield to get more damage. Note that that's not going to increase your fire damage for RF. It's going to increase the single target of your rolling magma uh, and your flame surge. Oops. Let's go back to the sewers here. Okay, this part gets very, very fun. So over here, we're going to fight a guy who has very high fire damage, but we should be okay. His name is Gravicious, and he gives us access to... Um, <clears throat> how did I forget what, it is, what it's called? I can't believe I forgot what it's called. Armageddon Brand! There we go, Armageddon Brand. So Armageddon Brand will replace that pesky rolling magma that, like, most of you guys don't like because of the aiming, right? But, you know, a lot of you probably don't even run it anymore. You just run around with RF, and that's totally fine, too. So, let us kill this guy. See you later. Perfect. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump back. I'm going to talk to this guy right over here. I don't actually don't know why I talked to him. That's not who I need to talk to. I talk to this person right over here. Yeah, and let's grab our Armageddon brand. Where is it? Stormbind, Flame Blast, Firestorm. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, I'm also going to save this full-scale armor. This is another potential uh, uh, one for Fire Trap, so that's pretty good. We're going to take the Armageddon brand, and we're literally going to just replace Rolling Magma with it. See you later. This skill will feel very responsive. And we're now officially in zoomer mode. Ooh, Iron Scepter. What are the chances that this rolls plus one fire gems with fire multi? I say about 50-50. Uh, Neither. Unlucky. 
Oh, okay, so it's over here we need to go. Let's go back there. Now, brands are a little interesting, so we're able to have three brands out at once, I believe, and I think only one of them can be on the target. You can see your brands in the top left. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, just don't hold down right click on your brand. You're just going to like kind of click in a general direction, and they'll pretty much take care of the rest while you flame surge. can also choose to not flame surge and just use your uh, flammability as well. Both of them work. Flammability strips their fire resistance down so much that you don't even really have to worry. Your damage is just going to be great. This guy does insane amounts of damage, so be a little careful of him. Or just kill him in like two seconds and you're also okay. Now, with the way our character is, I would prefer using Shield Charge instead of Leap Slam. For me to really like Shield Charge, I want to have at least Shield Charge faster attacks. So I may switch to that at some point, but right now it's okay like this. Ooh, look at that, a portal gem? Well, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to go drop this stuff off and vendor it. Hello. Be careful. Oops. And so Steps into damnation incarnate. Where? Okay. Now we are going over to Piety. Now our cold res is really bad because we haven't really updated our gear for like, I don't know, 15 levels. Um, so we just want to be a little careful on Piety. She's got three forms. She's got a fire form, an ice form, and her default form, which is lightning. You always want to kind of aim to go up. You don't ever want to go down. So now that we went up, we don't want to go down. Okay, and then here you want to go the way with one cart, not two. Two is a dead end. that after the fight here. Actually, I could put it on right now. We'll kill some more mobs. I think there's always a blue pack right next to Piety over here. Right in the middle. Oh, okay. Those are actually perfect fire trap colors. So, fire trap is officially good to go. Your conviction drives you here. Okay. Brands, cursed, spam flame surge. Where is she? Brand, flame surge. Curse. She's in ice. We're going to hide behind a pillar here. 
He should be out, so let's go check. Okay, get our key. Doesn't Fire Trap want two green? Actually, yeah, you're right. Fire Trap does want two green. You're right, not perfect colors. Close to perfect. Be careful. Yeah, Fire Trap wants uh, green, green, blue, red. Check here. Good luck to you. Tell okay. Let's go continue. I'm gonna grab barbarism here and then I'll grab party. For the guy who's asking about the RF Scepter for Inquisitor, you can just pick up gear off the floor and identify it. You can also do the 40% gem, uh, gem vendor recipe, which will be a little tricky, but unfortunately, elemental scepters are very difficult to craft. Only Juggernaut has access to the minion version. Um, in general, with Inquisitor, you're not going to need as much damage, so you don't really have to worry about crafting every piece of gear right away. Crafting is a bit tricky in Path of Exile, and not every build can have a very easy access to an entry-level craft. So here we are going towards our library, where we get to get some good support gems. Burning damage is huge, like one of the strongest links for our RF. Uh, furthermore, we get to get our main single target, Fire Trap. But we don't want to use it right away because we're picking up the gem at level 1. The way this kind of works is, if your class naturally gets a gem, like say Righteous Fire, that gem will automatically be leveled and kind of scale with you up to a certain point. If you're buying a gem that you don't normally get, like say Fire Trap, it's giving it to us at level 1, but levels are different. So for example, Armageddon Brand requires level 28. So level one Armageddon Brand naturally is scaled to be leveled for level 28, right? Fire Trap, I think is level nine or a little bit lower. So we wanna level it up a little bit before we actually switch to it. Okay, more, more things for Fire Trap. We're just gonna hold these, although I'm probably not gonna use it. I'm just gonna pick up these usable four links. All right, barbarism, very nice. Why do you take no damage? Oh, fire and ignite resist, I see. Here is our loose candle. See, our regen is not as potent as it used to be as well. So this is where getting uh, Hardy is going to help us a lot. Somewhere around here. Okay, here's the fourth one. Perfect. Beautiful. All right, let's go back. So I know for sure I need a chance orb. Oh, okay, I have a chance orb. I was about to yoink one almost almost instinctively from my currency tab. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and buy some gems here. 
So we for sure want burning, right? This is when you can actually look at the POB. I do believe the POB will show some of this stuff. So let's take a look and look at it. I haven't looked at it in quite a while. So we are 3255. So it says here, do not forget to do library quest for fire trap. You want to level fire trap ASAP. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have fire trap here. Okay. Fire trap. Perfect. And we have our burning damage. I don't remember what exactly we need off the top of my head. Again, you can look through the uh, the POB here. So I'll just flash it again and look at the gems here. Um, so uh, Armageddon brand, we're good. Uh, Flame Surge, we good. We actually never got Immolate. Immolate is a huge link. Can we get Immolate? Immolate's for 38. We can't get Immolate yet. Okay. Um, here's our Righteous Fire links. We don't have a four link at the moment. Your single target's good enough. Drop Flame Surge. We're running our auras. I don't care about the Arcane Surge right now. We don't have the faster attacks. Stone Golem is in the next act. We have our flammability, so we're pretty good. All right. Yep. Good, good. Let's speak again. So I'm going to take this Fire Trap and just start leveling it. And I'm going to level the burn damage as well. Oh. Oh. There is one gem for sure I know I want, actually. Trap and mind damage. Let's go secure that now. Trap and mind damage. This one. Do we have an open spot? We do. Perfect. Remember that sometimes whenever you weapon swap, your auras will turn off. So don't forget to uh, turn your auras back on if you are weapon swapping to level up your gems. So we're going to turn RF off here because for uh, Fire Trap, we don't want that. You, you can grab faster attacks there. Yeah, that's another option. I'm not too concerned about the faster attacks right now. This looks like the lap trial. We don't want to go here. That's for you guys. You can get Righteous Fire for off-leveling whenever you want. There is no restriction. I would say it matters more when you're in maps. The campaign doesn't matter too much. Because you're not really doing much leveling in the campaign. Like, you're not blasting content, right? Once you're in maps, you're typically going much faster. You've got higher monster density. They're higher level. So, we are coming across Dominus, who does insane lightning damage. We are not lightning res cap because our gear is... A force to be reckoned with right now. <laughs> so, uh, yep, this should be fun. Although he'll die pretty fast. You, you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, there are just a few mechanics we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about for Dominus when we get there. But for now, we're just going to we're just gonna climb up towards him. It's a good idea to have a couple of portal scrolls going in. A lot of people do struggle with Dominus. There's a lot going on if you've never done the fight before. Pretty much just trying to climb this and go higher and higher here. I keep forgetting to use the Armageddon brand. It's it's really good to kind of kill monsters while you're running away along with RF. You don't really have to pick up every item you see, right? But it's very good to uh, make sure you keep leveling with the zones, right? So that way you don't fall behind. Although most people don't have that problem. Most newer players overlevel content, which is good for you. Oh, 
There it is, I see it there. Okay. Very close to Dominus. Okay, this should be it right here. So, not a bad idea to drop a portal, whether it's outside or during the fight, that's up to you. Couple things to talk about here. This guy right here does what's called shotgun. You don't want to stand in his face. See that attack there where he sprays those five bolts? Each one of those bolts can hit you at the same time, thus resulting in five hits. So, there's no harm in just, you know, killing him one at a time. So, we'll move on over. We see him right over there. We're going to just keep our distance from him. Even though we have 200% fire res, it doesn't help when you just get instantly imploded. Okay, now these guys are not too hard. This one here just kind of wants to melee you. You can just kill him. This one here does really fast attacks, but they lock themselves in place, so you can just move and kind of hit. This other guy just literally does nothing. I promise you, you could just, like, stand in his face and he won't do anything. So that, that doesn't really matter. We'll just pretend he doesn't exist. Okay, so now is when you want to make sure you drop a portal if you haven't. Now we've got Dominus. You want to move away from this lightning. If you are res capped, you're fine. Touch of God will one-shot you probably. Don't tank it. So an easy thing to do, you can just stand in his face. And when he does that, Frost Blink out. Go back in and re-engage. And then you can actually just run in a circle around during this. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Okay. Now second phase is very heavy degen oriented. So if you want to replace a portal or whatever you want, you can. Uh, so what's going to happen in this phase is there's going to be this gigantic, like, rain. You want to make sure you're always next to the boss. If you try to kite the boss, he will fly at you, literally. Don't try to kite him. Stay right here next to him and just focus on your HP potions. Don't spam them. Just pay attention, right? So let's look here, right? Just This is the rain here. If you go outside, you will probably die. As he hits you, you will build up stacks of what's known as Corrupted Blood. Um, I think... Do I have a Corrupted Blood Removal Flask? I don't know why it's... Okay, well, he already died. I was trying to explain, but I couldn't. Anyway, he's not that hard with this build. We're kind of okay. So, he's a pushover. Now we just go on and continue. May these waters wash away my sins and baptize me anew. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not inside the, the rain bubble, then it will constantly apply the stacks of Corrupted Blood to you. Okay, now we're going to get another surge of regeneration. So that's really nice with our progression, since you can tell our regen is kind of, it's not really falling off, it's just not like overpowered anymore, right? So we're going to get a good friend up here called Stone Golem. We're pretty much going to run it until, still a little bit into maps, so we've got him for quite a while. It's going to be our best friend. I'm actually going to take that shield. Because it's got plus one fire gems. Just kidding. So whenever you have a side area like this, in this area, at the end of the side area will be a pack of blue monsters. This is very good for just keeping up with, you know, with levels. Uh, blue monsters give way more XP than regular mobs, so it definitely helps a lot. There's another chromatic orb. Going to that. There's a little mini boss guy. He'll die in like 1.2 seconds. He's going to jump on us now, so we're going to just move out of the way. Oh, we still got hit, but it's fine. Pick up another chromatic here. I am no beast this is a nice base uh, for a shield. I'm actually going to pick it up and just see what it rolls. Ooh, wow. So it gives 16 Eli res, life regen, and life, along with mana regen. That is, uh, that is unfortunately what we call 
unethical, so we leave it on the floor. That's too good of a shield. I must have time to okay. We have made it to town. Let's go ahead and vendor. We're still running on three links, and everything honestly feels okay. Good luck. Let's go ahead and check we for a four link. Maybe we'll get lucky here. Do you need help with something? Uh, not Bye. yet. This one over here. Yes. Okay. Any four links, so there won't be anything in here. This is actually a good scepter. Yeah, gives a gives actually like it's close to forty percent fire damage. That's actually pretty good. I might actually buy that. Um. No four links here. Oops, didn't see that last bead. Don't think so. I'm actually gonna buy this little scepter out. And uh, we have a fire trap here. Let's see. Um, hmm. How do I do this? We currently have purity of elements and fire traps, so I'll put vitality here, purity of elements here. Swap this on, put fire trap there. And you can always check your damage by comparing. So I will lose damage doing this, but I gain some fire damage for my Righteous Fire, so it's just a trade-off I'm willing to take. I am sorry, God. We must learn not to abuse your creations. This is that corrupted blood stuff I was talking about that makes you lose life. This guy has a big slam. We don't want to get hit by it. Other than that, he's very easy. That's the slam. That's about it. He also has a charge, which is right there. I'm just cross blink to the other side. Oops. All right, down he goes. Is this Orum Vorax? What is this? Oh, it is. 52 Ali Res. Yeah, that's cheating. We can't use that. That's actually a really good body armor, too. We're going to vendor that, too. Goodbye. Be careful. Okay. So, now we're going to go over here. We're going to talk to this little seal. Then we're going to run around here. And then we're going to pick up our stone golem. Bye-bye. Good. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm actually going to weapon swap. And I'm going to take off this wand. And we're going to look for a shield that has another green socket. So, let's go check here. You could also pick this up off the floor. It's not a super big deal. Uh, I would take a sword, but I can't dual wield the sword. But to be fair, I'm not actually needing to dual wield anything right now. So let's grab this sword for one transmutation. Right? Then I'll put in the trap in mine. Put in the fire trap. Take off the two wands. Put this on. Vendor the two wands. Weapon swap back, take the stone golem, put it in the socket, ready to continue. Stone golem is going to give us a lot of regeneration, so we can actually look, we're 285, we're going to summon the stone golem, we're up to 321. bit of our socket pressure will be alleviated soon. What I mean by that is when we switch to our fire trap, we're going to be dropping the Armageddon brand and the flame surge. So overall, we will gain some links back. This is usually when I try to go shield charge. Ooh, colossal. We're going to hope this one rolls bubbling or seething. It didn't, but that's still fine. Still an upgrade. Another four link. Another evasion base. 
So rude. So many evasion bases. What about the armor ES bases? Even pure ES would be fine. Pure ES we could use. The only problem with a pure ES body, or a pure ES would be a body armor. The reason I bring emphasis to body armor is it's the most amount of armor we could possibly get. So I try to get the links on other pieces. The only time I try to use a four link body armor is if it actually has, like if it's a base that's good for us, which would be an armor base or an armor energy shield base. But ultimately, I mean, I'm wearing, you know, one that gives 33 armor, so that's not really much anyway. So I would take a four link body armor at this point, no matter what it is, if I could use it. All right, so if you look at our regen now, we have 321 and we're gonna allocate Hardy. It went to 388. That is why we really want Hardy. Hardy is an extremely strong node. Over here, you gotta be careful with this guy. He spawns a bunch of spinning hammers around him. Um, I think we killed him before he actually used it, but you actually don't need to. You can just take the spirit and that's a skill point for later. fire trap is required level 23 this is an easy way to see like when you want to use the fire trap you can just look at the level requirement on it when it's getting close to the level requirement of you you could switch it and probably switch a little bit earlier because we're going from a three link to a four link Yeah, for the people who keep asking about the comparisons between Juggernaut and Inquisitor, you guys can just link them to the FAQ and let them know it's on there. A very detailed question there. Okay, this guy is ghosted. We are going to just kind of run away from it. The golem can tank him. Loot. Nothing very good. Faster attacks would be very good for Leap Slam. But again, it's not about how fast I go through the campaign. It's about how much I can help people get through it. Okay, let's go back and get our skill point and redeem that right over here. I am your whole I You've done yourself proud today, Exile. Anything you need, just ask. I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff here. And goes peak for another four link. Let's see. Nope. And I think nope. And nope. It's okay. One day we'll get it. So now I believe we have a few options. We can go down towards Sanctity to get some more armor scaling. I'm going to take Amplify here to get a little bit more AoE, personally. I'm a big fan of AoE on RF. So here, we're going to go ahead and go to Duresso. Only problem with going to Duresso now is we haven't really picked up any armor pieces with the exception of our gloves. I mean, we do have some armor, but it's not that much. You might get slapped a little bit here. Getting a pure ar armor body armor would help massively with mitigating the physical damage we take here.
Perfect. Now, I'm also going to do something a little weird. It's more of a player preference here. I'm actually going to spec into this node and drop a life node. Just because I like having AoE. Ask and you shall receive. Okay, okay. I like what I see. All right. We could probably make this work right now. So let's portal out. You remember all of those uh, blue background items we were picking up and vendoring for chromatic orbs? Now it's time to use them. So for RF, we want blue, 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 red. You can do some different colors, but blue, 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 red would be ideal. So we're going to ask for a red right here. Okay. I don't want those colors. We want... But let's keep going. That is extremely unlikely that you had that's called four off colors um we're gonna fix it okay perfect we got it so what we can go ahead and do now is we can alk it now normally you would want to use your armor scraps but we can't sustain the energy shield so it doesn't really matter so before we alk it we can look at our essences here so this will guarantee 23 fire res to the bone circlet so we're gonna go ahead and do that Okay, so we actually got tri res, and I would normally delete an item like this, but unfortunately, it's the only four link we've gotten for RF, so we are not deleting it. You can also go ahead and craft life there as a prefix. So now we're going to go ahead and take our Righteous Fire with our Elemental Focus alongside with our Burning Damage that is uh, right here. And then we're also going to slap an Efficacy right there. We're going to take off this helmet swap it with this one now over here we've got leap slam and life tap and then we have an open flammability which also wants to be supported with life tap so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this vitality pull it over here take the purity of elements move it over here grab the flammability stick it in my weapon go back to act one purchase another life tap so that we can life tap our flammability Okay, and now I want to go ahead and use a pair of gloves or a body, anything really. So in this instance, this full-scale armor is far superior to this chainmail vest because just the armor base is so much higher. So I will try to color this to use for fire trap. Might be a little bit early, but it's totally fine. I want to minimize some buttons here. So we're going to throw our four armor scraps at it. And before I actually alk it or continue further, let's try to get green, green, blue, red. Okay, so kind of unlucky that I didn't roll a blue. You can absolutely do... Um, you can craft one blue at the bench, but that's usually not... Usually I hit a blue on something this low of stat requirements, but that's okay. Um, we can use burning damage, but I do... I, I, I'm going to gamble it. I'm going to gamble it. I need to gamble. I have to gamble. It's required. I must gamble. Okay, it's not worth it. So we're going to put those back, and um, we're going to take out... Hmm, what should we do here? A little, little puzzled. Um, okay, we're going to just stick with our normal setup. Yeah, we're going to just stick with the normal setup. That's okay. So we have Purity of Elements, Flame Surge, Elemental Focus. Uh, that doesn't really work. We have Ellie Prolif, Armageddon Brand, Combustion. Right, so what is this? Purity of Elements. This is Life Tap, Leap Slam. Let's take out the Life Tap. Put Purity of Elements down here. Grab another Efficacy. And we will go ahead and use our normal setup. And we will just aim for some chromatics. Let's actually go back here. Yeah, you can also look at the vendors to get some chromatic orbs. But we're okay. I mean, we're not really struggling. I just wanted to uh, switch off of it. That's all. If you have two reds, you can use life tap and burning damage. 
if you have two blues, you can go ahead and use um, combustion and control destruction. deleting us right now without the uh, armor. That's why I wanted to swap on that full scale. experience to pick up over here. Oops, a daisy. I'm not used to these keybinds. <laughs> not used to using flame surge for so long because I'm used to juggernaut leveling. There's a lot of experience to be gained in these areas if you want to catch up on some levels. You can kind of just like walk by each one of these little, I don't know what they're called, uh, whatever they are, and then you can kind of just tap an arm again, Brand, and it'll kill most of the monsters here. Ooh, and sometimes you find a gem mob like that. So I'm going to do this respec here. You do not have to do this. This is a me thing that I would like to do. And um, I want to say that I'm going to go towards Sanctity now. Now we're going to Dereso and we got to be careful. We have very little armor. Normally we would legitimately have like five times this, maybe six times. Um, so we just don't want to take too much damage on the fight. So we're going to drop a portal, and we're going to kind of run in a circle a lot here. So we're just going to hit him with the Armageddon brand, debuff him, flame surge occasionally, and kind of just run in a circle. So while he's like this, recurse him, put your Armageddon brand, run in a circle. These little, uh, these little swords here do a lot of damage, so you don't want to stand in them. get lucky your golem will tank and he doesn't take damage so there's that too we give our fallen heroes more. yes mm, i'm just gonna vendor everything here to be honest be careful To comb we go actually I'm gonna check the vendor and see if I can see a uh, chromatic orb I don't remember yes. how you can how how you can do the regex for is it like that I think uh, I don't actually know it's fine it doesn't matter too much um yeah let's move on I'm watching you do, 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 do. There was a four link armor. There was a five link. There's a five link in there? Definitely not taking a five link. That is very unethical. I don't think there was a five link. But then again, I didn't really look. So, big focus here. We really want to pivot into armor soon. 
The main reasoning is we're going to be going into a very dangerous area after we kill Colm. And uh, the problem with that is the mobs are very, very, very heavy physical. So at some point here, <laughs> hopefully I find some chromatics so that we can slap on that body armor. Oh, a chromatic. Look at that. Okay. Maybe this is the one we need. Go buy the four link plate. Plate would imply it's armor based, which means pure red, which is hard to color for fire trap. Though to be fair, I don't really feel like we even need Flame Surge right now. I think we can just drop Flame Surge entirely and be fine. It is nice single target, but it's definitely not needed. Gotta be careful here. There are these little totems that do insane amounts of damage. Never want to stand still for those little guys. Uh, there was virtually no changes from 3.21 to 3.22, so just use the current POBs on the website, friend. Let's go back. Check what we got. This is actually pretty good. I'm going to save this one. Actually, I'm just going to swap from this right now. It gives a little bit of dex in life. Anything you need, just ask. Vendor, vendor, and vendor. Also going to vendor these and get a chance orb out of them. See ya. We have two chromatics. Come on, baby. Even if it hits... Come on, you can do it. You can do it. All right, that's good enough. We'll take it. We'll take it. Not the best links. We don't get trap and mine damage, but that's okay. At least we got something. Um, so we don't have a good essence. So I'll just use this one, which is 15 to 30 life on it. And uh, it's pretty poopy, but it's good enough. That's definitely good enough. Oh, actually, I lied. I did have a resistance one. That sucks. I would have rather done that, but that's okay. All right, so now we're going to swap here. We are going to take Fire Trap. We are going to take Combustion. We are then going to take that Life Tap in our inventory. And we are going to go ahead and grab a Burning Damage. Now, either I can get Burning Damage from here. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you don't get it from here, it's in your library. Bye. Then we're just going to directly swap that. We don't need this. We don't need this which means we can actually even use a pure armor shield if we need to um so this is garbage this is garbage efficacy is okay le focus is okay can actually just level these if we want to it's not a bad idea because we may use them for rf later so i'll take the shield put it in the off swap put these over here good to go you're right so something nice that we could do is if we find an armor based shield right we can actually look for red green red so let's take a look and see if we can find red green red on a shield anywhere Do you have any shields not really there's this one but that's not colored or fused so we can't really use it the reasoning for this is because i would love to set up shield charge take care what do you want
don't have it, but that's okay. I am literally going to buy this right here. Okay, and then I'm going to throw a Jeweler's Orb on it. But first, I am going to just use some Armor Scraps. Jeweler Orb, Jeweler Orb again. Then I'm going to one-tap fuse all three of them because I can. Okay, that didn't work the way I wanted it to, but that's fine. And then I'm just going to use one of my Essences here on it. And now we have a shield that somehow rolled no armor. Oh, I used an Energy Shield Essence on it. That was really stupid. That's okay, though. These shields can't normally roll Energy Shield, but that makes it fun. Then we'll just come over here, and we're going to look for the lowest armor roll. So, ARM for armor. Armor, let's see. We can either do percent armor here, so 26 to 35, or you can do flat armor. Oh, it has a mod of it. It does? Wait. Wow, the flat energy shield actually takes up the armor roll. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. Well, I guess we can only craft this one then. So this is four transmutes. We're going to go ahead and do that and just slap on that shield and we're good to go. I learned something. I never knew that. That makes sense though. Okay. So, yep. Let's go ahead and go to the crystal veins. Let's go ahead and click Diala. Now, I think at this point here, we can actually go back to Diala and redeem increased area of a... F okay, never mind. I lied. Is it piety then? Is it because I didn't fully click it? it maybe it's because I didn't fully click it. That might have been it. Back here. Oh, wait. I never fought Colm. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We didn't fight Colm yet. Did we really not fight? No, 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 no. Right, right, right. We went back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So let's take a look. Our armor before was... Um, our armor before was... Like, uh, like 200 or 180? We now have 872. So that's much better. Since we finally swapped off of that shield, I am fairly confident that this shield is going to roll plus one fire gems now. Okay, it didn't. Thank God. So all of these are just level requirement gated. So when we level up, we can use those. I must have time to gather my own. Oof. Some of these essences can be a little spooky since we're not very geared. I'm going to be skipping them. That guy specifically has this unique modifier. Not unique modifier, but he uses what's called Frost Bomb. And it reduces our recovery by a lot. So I'm just skipping them. see that RF does enough damage to pretty much kill the mobs. You don't really have to fire trap unless it's a rare target. Even the rare targets, it does quite a bit of damage too. Oh, we also don't really need the MP potions, so we can absolutely switch to uh, more life flasks, the double quicksilver I was talking about before, if you get one, a granite flask, a lot of good options. Alright. Now, I believe with my POB, I want to say we're going over here. Um, one thing I forgot to take was the 50 life mastery, so I'm going to secure that now. Yes. yes. Okay. Let me go ahead and just check. Ah, oh, this would be a good base, but it's not uh, linked. Is it a good base? Actually, not really. Sort of, kind of, maybe. May fear guide you. Hmm, that's another one that I completely forgot. Yes, thank you. There was actually a mastery I completely forgot about. Down here, you're supposed to take the... Uh, 50 life regen mastery, you should absolutely grab that. I forgot about it. Good call. Thank you. 
That helps a lot with the sustain. Uh, we can also go grab Inke Aoi now, now that we have turned that in. Yeah, it can be tricky memorizing every exact thing while giving the commentary. Commentary definitely throws me off a little bit. Still. Okay, I am going to replace efficacy here. And put it in the swap here. So I've got RF, LE Focus, Efficacy, and Burning Damage. Yeah, and the 50 Life Regen will get scaled off of the Harding mod modifier, so it'll actually be more than 50. Now, this is the area I was talking about where you want the armor for. These mobs or, uh, apply a lot of bleed on your character, so whenever you get bled, if you start dying, you want to stop moving. Sacred Life Flask. Let's see what that. Shadow Scepter. That's a Chromatic. Ooh, Grinning Fetish. Remember, Blue Scepters can roll potentially plus one fire. Okay, there is a plus one fire scepter. Um, for the sake of the campaign, we're going to put that on the floor and pretend like we never actually got it. Arena plate. Okay, arena plate has the same exact uh, same exact colors as my current body armor, but far higher armor. So we may actually switch to that. The damage difference would be pretty significant. I'm not gonna go show it. People know what they're looking for, it's fine. <laughs> Allow me to demonstrate. Let's go take that recovery node now. So we are at 398, I think we go to like 460 maybe? Oh my. Let's see, 50 life regen, we are at 455. What do we have here? Don't need those. If I find a second one, I'll use the second one. Do we have more armor scraps? We have three, okay. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is... Ooh, 20% movement speed boots. Okay, those are mm, not too bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and slap on the arena plate here. So, I'm going to hit it up with the armor scraps. And then we're going to elk it. And then we are going to go craft... That armor roll that we did before. So, this one right here. We now have a 600 armor body armor. Let's swap those gems over. Vendor the old one. Keep your eyes Put it back on. Now, this here, 20% uh, movement speed with life. These are very nice boots, actually. So, we're going to just directly swap here. Swap the boots. Salam. We're going to vendor these because we don't need them. Check out this. Oh, that's good. Blessings. Actually, I should have just saved the third life flask, but it really doesn't matter. All right. I'm also going to go peek the shields here again. What do you need now? Okay. I'm watching you. Doesn't really matter. Let's go back into our waypoint, turn on our auras, and continue. Oh, also, our golem. You can always check if your golem's alive up here. I think because we swapped our gear around, the golem disappeared. A jewel? There's a pretty much a 0% chance we're ever going to use jewels in the campaign. But if you identify and it gets like life and fire damage or life and fire multi, life and damage over time, pretty much life and one damage modifier, it's okay to get, but you don't have to use it. I would just keep it. So that doesn't do anything. You see, now, piety here, auto attacks for so much damage. So just be very careful on her auto attacks. 
we currently have like 1300 armor you want to kite here in a circle throw your fire traps keep up the burning ground keep up your curse on your flammability and just keep going in a circle and you'll be okay if you try to start focusing on the ads you may get a little a, well there's nothing wrong on throwing an occasional fire trap at the ads but i just like going in a circle talk to her and continue yeah, we're about to start taking large surges of damage. So remember I was talking about those guard skills? It's not a bad idea to go pick up a Molten Shell or a Steel Skin and start using it now. You'll just literally put it on your left click and then you'll never worry about it. Grab waypoints. Wow, 32 burning. We got a new weapon. Sort of. Well, we could use this one. Sure. So, Dodre, you don't want to use your curses on her. If you use your curse, which is your flammability, she will eat it, gain bonus damage as chaos, and then delete you. After going the right side, you can take a portal, and then you can actually go back to the waypoint, and you save the traveling time here. Wrong weapon. Oh, that is the wrong weapon. Thanks, dude. back you are in oops wrong spot okay So for this guy, you don't want to go through that beam and watch out where he's slamming because your golem will take slams as well. He drops traps on the floor, which really shouldn't do much damage to us. Uh, when Piety yells, kill me, you need to get her to half life. Then after that, it'll go back to Malachi. All right, watch out for that slam. Dodge whenever he does that little squiggly attack. I just frost blink. Then Piety goes in to kill me again. You kill that phase. Then he talks a bunch of poo poo, and then he goes down below, and then you get to the next phase. This is his slam, we just move away. Then he spawns this heart first, you kill it, go back to the boss fight. Oh, go back to the boss. Kill this one down here. Move away from the squiggly attack. Kill this heart. Jump back to Malachi. He's slamming now, so we're going to move out of the way. Then jump right back. he goes okay portal out you can actually just wait for the 
the like little TP thing, it'll also uh <clears throat> it will also uh teleport you out. I'm gonna sell these whetstones for some wisdom scrolls so I can start IDing some more gear. You fought against okay. and your whole life, Malachi. That's uh this is actually a better scepter. Yeah, this has um this is actually a pretty good scepter. So this scepter has tier two burning damage and has a fire damage suffix. So what I can actually do is go to my hideout here and I can craft the fire damage prefix. It's a little tricky here because there's a suffix and there's a prefix. Now, I don't know what level we actually get this craft at. So, I'm, I mean, it says 32. I'm pretty sure I unlocked it, but just for simplicity, I will craft this little one down here. Then I'm gonna go ahead now and chrome it. So this one is red blue and that's currently what we're using although i don't think it matters actually but let's just do it anyway so one little chromatic here red blue swap on our weapon you can always compare your damage so here my rf says 5k now it says 5.6k so very big increase there so we're gonna vendor this one and this one identify the body get rid of it pretty much sell all of this stuff goodbye turn that vitality oh vitality's on okay I feel like, I feel like I can actually buy Skitterbots. I, I don't remember if I buy Skitterbots in the POB. I think I do. Let me try this out. So I'm going to use Skitterbots. Let's see here. Flammability, Life Tap, Purity of Elements, Leap Slam, Frost Blink. That means I actually need a blue on the shield. Ooh, that's not likely to happen, but let's see. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, right. So first off, let's see if this even would work. Oh, you know, if you switch an aura, that doesn't really make sense. Okay, never mind. Um, don't mind me. Don't mind me. We'll save this little guy for later. Um, yeah. We are moving forward here. Okay, so we are 41. I'm going to go ahead and stop here for a minute and compare the POBs. So, let's take a look. This POB is 30 to 55, so let's expand the tree and look at it. 30 to 55. 30 to 45. Right, so down here we have the mastery. We have barbarism. Um, I have not taken precision, mainly because I don't have dex issues, so I'm leaving that alone. I do have the 50 life mastery. We have the regen mastery. Um, so I believe now we are on our way to uh, come across up here. So 30 to 45, we are 41. Um, yeah, everything is pretty good here. Let's go ahead and drop down the next tree. So you'll notice on the next tree here, right? We are filling out acrimony, explosive impact and grabbing juggernaut. So more damage and AOE up here more armor and life down here. The choice is yours. Ascent is an area where the mobs start to hit quite a bit harder. Um, so it's entirely up to you here. Four link boots. In about 13 levels, we get to ascend somewhere around there, and we get the most unethical power spike you could imagine. I think it's actually up there, not down here. Um, I'm gonna go up here. 
I get some damage. I feel pretty confident. And we don't need these MP potions anymore. There's a leather belt here. Our belt is like really bad. I'm gonna just alk this belt. I would normally look for one with a little bit of a better base. What I mean by that is this is 29 out of 40 HP, but that's okay. Holy, is that a good belt? We got life. We got two res. I'm down. I'm pretty happy. We'll take it. What is the power spike? Power spike comes from our ascendancy. Um, I don't really care to ascend on normal lab right away on Inquisitor because you get consecrated ground while stationary, and you're not really stationary a lot in this game. Chains that bind. This is very good for SSF farming uh, your six link, uh, but you would do it in higher tier maps. But if you get lucky and it drops here, you can save it for later. Yeah, for people who don't know, divination cards are themed around like an like a tile set. So this, this tile set, this area, uh, basically has chains that bind cards, which is very good because you turn in 11 and you get a six link body armor. May not be usable, especially if it's like pure evasion, but it's still good. So here you can look at your lowest resistance. If I look at mine, it would be cold. So I'm going to purchase, or we'll claim my cold one. You can take a look here. So this is 25 total cold res, but this is 14 and 14 times two is 28. So this is actually more total res. Um, this one is 30 total res. So I'll actually snag this one, identify it, and it's pretty poopy. I'm not going to lie. It's not really that good. So uh, I'm going to just kind of enter that. Goodbye. Let's go continue. Oh, actually, we're going to go back. We're going to see if we can get that shield I was talking about. Or does this... They're not actually... Uh, is it you? Oh, yeah, it is. Cool. Ah! Something like this. Right here. Would be perfect. This is... Um, actually, I mean, we would just want a pure armor one like this, but it's not linked. Pure armor would be better because we just need one green on it. Um, I mean, this shield is not really that good. Uh, these are both pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. Let's wait. I like waiting. Yeah, the one blue we'll uh, we'll figure out. I could I could technically, you know, I could actually. How many jewelers do I have? Three. Try resocketing my gloves, but getting double blue on that is pretty unlikely. Could also try resocketing my. Uh, oh, a rare shield. Hold on, so much is going on. Let's identify it. Okay, all right. It's got about a little bit less armor than what we have, but it also has a prefix open for a life roll, so that's kind of good. There's so much I need. I want it all. I must have time to Blue two stone rings are still good to pick up. They can roll like very heavy life rolls. Where am I going? I'm lost, by the way. I think I'm supposed to be like all the way down here. Let's take a look at what we can get on this. And we don't want that. Oh, there are some more leather belts we could alk, but I'm happy with this. Okay, grab this. This is a bonus skill point. 
God does have a sense of humor. Even without the correct links, the damage is really kicking in. Combustion is just such a good support gem because it minuses enemy fire res, which scales your RF and your fire trap. Okay, actually, let's go back real fast here. Okay, um, so might use the shield, still don't fully know. Okay, here we have Ruby Flask and Granite Flask. Now, I don't remember, ultimately, both of them are really good. Granite Flask doubles your armor, Ruby gives you more regeneration. Um, I don't remember, one of them is not redeemable later, I forgot. Doesn't make that much of a difference. I think right now I'm going to take the Granite because the Surge of Armor will help a lot more than a bit more regeneration. So I'm going to snag that now. And we're just going to put it right there, because we don't really need that MP flask. We do this. Now we're going to turn in this one here. All right, good. Two more levels. So <clears throat> the fire one is not available in Lack 7. Okay, so if you take if you take the ruby now, you can get the granite later. If you take the granite now, you can't get a ruby later. There's a very good chance one will drop, though. So if I grab Acrimony here, Acrimony is a huge source of damage because we have virtually no fire multi on our tree. And get AoE on explosive impact. So I'm going to come over here and grab Acrimony. The nice thing about pathing up here is you can actually grab Agility for one point. So you don't have to take Precision unless you want to keep it for that Shield Charge speed or Leap Slam speed, which we're not using Shield Charge yet, sadly. Maybe, maybe soon. All right, so uh, let's take a look at uh, what we want to do. So I would like to get Shield Charge going. Shield Charge for me just feels way better than Leap Slam. So my options are I can try to color this shield now or I can wait for one to drop. Um, probably going to just, let me just see if I can color this shield now. I'll be honest, the shield is pretty bad, but let's just see. Do I get one green? Okay, we got one green. So I know I said I needed a blue for Skitterbot. Our damage feels fine right now. We're going to go ahead and try to fuse this. So now we officially could go shield charge. So we're going to go back to Lion Eyes Watch here. I'm going to go ahead and grab shield charge here, or right here, so shield charge for one transmutation. We're going to go grab faster attacks. I think we have to get that from library. Do we? Do we? Get it? I think we have to. This is so weird now because normally you'd get it in act two. I'm not used to this. Yeah, there's no faster attacks here. So we'll go ahead and pick that up real fast. Here is our faster attacks. And then we're going to take that life tap that I don't think I actually have right now. Oh, it's in the flammability, but that's fine. We'll get another one here. So let me just go back to act one. Faster attacks is Weaver reward. No, they changed that. We're going to grab a life tap here. Now, we actually want a low level life tap later. It doesn't matter right now. It only matters when you actually have righteous fire uh, supported with life tap, which is later. That way, as you shield charge, it will consistently proc your life tap. So I'm going to get rid of Leap Slam. See you later. We're going to take Stone Golem uh, and put Stone Golem over here. And then uh, we're pretty much good to go. So we still want a blue to fit in the Skitterbot. You don't actually, again, need to do this. It's just that uh, Skitterbot is a nice damage increase for Fire Trap. And we don't have mana issues because... Fire Trap's Life Tap, Flammability's Life Tap, Shield Charge's Life Tap, and Golem, you just kind of summon and forget about him. So all we're spending MP on right now is the Frost Blink. 
Oh my goodness, this is... Oh, how did I wait so long? I love Shield Charge. Remember when we were looking for an RF Elm and then one just dropped again? All in the world is right when you have shield charge. Let's do a quick resistance check. We are good. Sulfur flask. Hmm. Sulfur flask uh, doesn't really help us. Well, I guess it's okay. It creates consecrated ground and gives us some damage. It's not bad because we literally don't need the MP flask, so we just get an extra utility flask. So talking about socket pressure here, we would want to get another blue for Skitterbot. So what I'm going to try to do now might be really stupid. So I'm going to take off my weapon and I'm going to jeweler it in hopes that it hits a third socket and that third socket is blue. Okay, let's try that one more time because I'm a believer. Aha! Okay. So now we can take off Stone Golem, take off Purity of Elements, put the Life Tap Flammability in, put the weapon back on, take the Skitterbot, put it on, summon the Skitterbot, turn it off, turn on the elements, we're good to go. We are good to go! Skitterbot gives us a damage multiplier to our Fire Trap. Furthermore, it shocks nearby targets, making them take extra damage from all damage sources. Yep, if you read the Skitterbot's gem, it grants you trap and mind damage, and uh, it applies shock and chill in an AoE. Okay, this is a pretty big damage multi here. A load life flask, I'm just gonna slap that on over my current one since it's better. Using orb. Must have time to gather the Our golem's not even up. Let's resummon him. The hour of judgment draws near. Shrines usually have a big pack of mobs in them. It's pretty nice. Now we're coming across a tricky boss called Innocence. In my opinion, one of the harder bosses in the game. Uh, you want to make sure your lightning resistance is absolutely capped for Innocence. And as of course, you want to bring some portal scrolls because uh, the fight is a little tricky. Now, thankfully, if you've been following along, your damage should be similar to mine, if not better if you have the correct fire trap links. And with a lot of damage, you don't have to worry about the dangerous phases as much. Your standard rotation right now is basically killing stuff with RF. If the targets don't die instantly, you'll want to go ahead and throw your flammability curse. And then if they're extra tanky, go ahead and use that fire trap as well. This way you don't have to feel like you're throwing the sluggish fire traps all the time. Ooh. 
other fence around. Huh? Now, when you're near Innocence, there are a crazy amount of blue monsters, which again, very good XP. So before you jump into that fight, peek the corners, because each corner has a pack of blue mobs here. Okay, and now we can drop a portal. So, first phase, this guy has very heavy physical damage. You can just port away. When he's channeling that, just kind of move in a circle around him and you won't really get kit. This is an ad phase. You can pretty much drink your coffee right now because the mobs don't do anything. You can actually just like stay still and just chuck fire traps. Okay, and then... There you go. Now he'll also summon a statue who will walk towards you. Don't get hit by it. It hits really hard. Innocence is spawning. We can start pre-throwing fire traps. Okay. Curse him with flammability. He's already phased, so we just wait. Now, Innocence can be a little tricky. He does this gigantic scorching ray beam. When he does that, I would pop a Quicksilver and run in a circle around him. It's fun. Um, he also has this, like, bullet cascade thing he does, kind of like what, what the other boss just did. You want to dodge that. You don't want to hug him too close unless it's the Scorching Ray phase, because he does this charge, and he spawns a bunch of little lightning that will hit crazy fast. You'll also summon that right there. he will also summon the statue, which you don't really want to get hit by. And then one of his most dangerous attacks, he throws a ball that shoots really inaccurate projectiles, even if it looks like you're dodging it, sometimes you get hit by it, and they hit incredibly hard. Two things you're supposed to do for that phase is, number one, you're supposed to hide behind the statues he spawns to, like, line of sight them. Number two, you can just open up a portal and then wait out the phase. So open up a portal, come back inside, and then just wait. So, if you don't know, when you take a portal and then you enter, there will be an immunity phase for you while the fight is still going on. So you can kind of do that. All right, from here, we want to go through and talk to Bannon. Now we are kind of cruising. So next up, we have uh, one of the difficult fights again, and that's going to be Katava. One of the things to note about Katava, extremely heavy physical damage. You don't really want to tank the hits. If you know you're going to get hit by an attack, you want to hit your Granite Flask if you took it. You also have access to your Guard Skills, which are Molten Shell, and um, on top of Molten Shell, you could... Not on top of... Instead of Molten Shell, you can also use Steel Skin. Um, the other thing is, you get a big resistance penalty after killing Katava, so you want to try to be like 20 plus res. So our Lightning is already kind of good. Actually, I think it's 30. I forgot if it's 20. I think it's 30. Um, so our lightning is basically good. Our cold is not good. So we want to work on getting cold resistance. So we can look at our gear and take a look. So for example, this ring, as nice as this ring is, uh, it's kind of outdated. So we are on the lookout for a better ring. We could even try to find a sapphire ring. And since we have some alchemy orbs, we could just alk a sapphire ring. always forget I, I like don't know the campaign after this part here because my brain doesn't work ossuary is for library no 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 no. this one we need not library uh lab that's the other one right that's act nine ossuary is for labyrinth this one we actually need the uh the side of purity to open the katava fight which is right there okay 
Okay, so here we have two options. Number one, you can take the mastery for bonus damage over time multi if you've killed recently. It's honestly, I would say, worth taking. And then you can respec it to less damage taken over time when you are in maps. Um, so this is an option. I will take it right now. So the damage over time if you've killed recently. Just because our RF does enough damage to kill like all of these mobs. It's just kind of scaling the damage still. Now we have come across a problem. We do not have enough dexterity for our fire trap. So we have two options here that we can do. I cannot express how important it is to keep that fire trap leveled. As a caster, our main source of damage comes from leveling our gems. So by not leveling our fire trap, we are massively nerfing our single target potential. So the two, op three options are, number one, take agility. Number two, grab precision. Number three, craft decks on your gear. Number four, Make sure you have a jade base amulet or a turquoise base amulet. Um, I think even maybe Citrine has hybrid uh, dexterity and strength. I don't know exactly what it's called. You can often find these just sitting in the vendors. So we can actually take a little detour and show you because I want to find a sapphire ring. So uh, I don't care about this, whatever. We'll just take it. Okay. All right, so purchase items. Let's take a look here. So these are the dex and int I was talking about. And then here's citrine, which is strength and dex. And then, of course, we have our regular dex. We are looking for a sapphire ring. It rolls from 20 to 30 cold res. I'm just going to yoink this. Then I'm going to use an alchemy orb on it. Take a look. So unfortunately, we got pretty unlucky here. When I say we got unlucky, I mean we did not roll any form of... Uh, we didn't roll any suffix open so if we had an open suffix we could craft fire resistance i still want fire res because it's our biggest form of life regen so uh i'm not going to use this ring instead i'm going to scour it and alk it again you probably shouldn't do this but i'm pretty picky so i'm going to do it got really lucky there and we actually hit a dexterity roll with fire res so now we don't need additional dexterity and we can actually put life on it so i'm going to go ahead and do that So let's do the one for some alterations. Kaboom. Replace. Salah. Celerine. Hey. Yeah, you could just go through the zones like the previous acts and look at the NPCs or uh, which one has like sapphire rings and buy them out in elk, or you could just find one. There's always different ways. I've been intentionally neglecting a lot of gear, so I'm not over geared compared to the people who are following. On my loot filter, it shows blue two stone rings. Uh, you can pick those up and identify them. It's not uncommon that you find one with like 10 all res with the base that gives res, or maybe like 35 life with an open suffix that you can craft res. So a lot of the times you can just use those and they drop naturally. Okay, anytime a boss is talking shit to you like this, you just throw a bunch of fire traps at them. And then they pretty much die. Okay. Um, so our weapon is really good. I'll take the shield, but there's no way the problem There's actually a problem with this shield the chance of me getting red red green on it is unlikely because it's a armor ES So it requires int and strength. So I'm actually gonna take the scepter. There is a zero percent chance that is better than ours So I'm just gonna vendor it You're the only one who still does that boss, you know, I always forget Where do I actually need to go here? I know I'm supposed so I'm supposed to go to uh only unless you find the Katava's Torments and Reliquary. Oh, okay. So I should have taken my uh, teleport back, but I'm too lazy, so I'm just gonna shield charge. Yeah man, teach you how to deal with the bullies. Exactly, dude. Here we go. Reliquary. Just 
charge is lazier than teleporting. Yeah, I I can't explain it. I love shield charging. I can't shield charge in town, so I'd rather shield charge through a whole zone than like click five steps into the portal. I, I don't know why. It's just me. I, I really couldn't tell you. So a lot of these mobs here, uh, they come up out of like, I don't know what it is, like underneath. The rare mobs here are really tanky. I typically just skip them. They don't really have anything beneficial on them. Yeah, I think we're pretty much aiming for the corners here. For freedom. Good, good. Who do I bring this to? Do I bring it to the person right over here and they open it? So. Oh no, this is already open. God, I really do forget how to do the campaign. What an amazing goldfish memory I have. Now I'm going to come over here and grab this. It's actually so fantastic. I, I can play the same skill so many times and then just like forget something. I don't know. I think that's just what happens as a content creator, right? I think like our brain tries to protect us by deleting unnecessary information. <laughs> it's got to be what it is. Because there's some stuff I like remember and it will never go away. And then there's just some things that I, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, we are at Katava. I'm gonna put a portal here. Turn off the shrine. You should absolutely keep it on. So move away from that. If you see the swipe coming, you can frost blink over it. I would avoid shield charging through it. Keep that curse up. This black stuff here, you gotta be careful, it degens your character. Then there's a heart, we wanna kill the heart. Don't focus too much on the adds, just kill the heart. The adds despawn after that. Go back to the boss, keep smacking him, pay attention to his hands. So he's putting the degen, I'm gonna go to the other side, he's slamming, I'm gonna go back, just kidding, he's swiping. Okay, this you want to move out of. Those those pulses that he does, the pulse can hit you, and then the explode can hit you. So that is probably one of Katava's biggest killers, is the explode pulse. Anytime that explode pulse happens, I frost blink away. Okay, move away. I think that's the fight. I think we're done. Don't forget for the people who keep asking about Juggernaut versus Inquisitor for RF, among uh, other questions as well, feel free to use the RF command that brings up my website, pox.net. It is an entire website designed to be a Wikipedia for Righteous Fire. It's got everything in there. Chat, just direct the new people over to the website. Once they learn to use it, they will love it. So here we get hit with a big resistance penalty, but we already knew that, so we are kind of ready. So over here, this side quest uh, wants us to kill 
every single target. It's comparable to the Den of Evil if you've played Diablo 2. So the reason we want to do this is so that we can buy gems from Lily Roth instead of having to go to library because it's a pain in the ass. Lily Roth can also be added to your hideout, um, so another advantage. You'll notice also that at the beginning of the zone, there was uh, a little like mirror sort of that's called a delirium mirror i typically avoid them while leveling it makes it so the mobs are a lot stronger a lot of random things occur and you take a lot of damage you can absolutely do them if you want to just expect that you may or may not die okay we are done let's go back Turn this into Lily, get some respect points here. Okay, let's check some gear. Now, as we are playing through, you will occasionally, this is actually a pretty good shield, it's got a good life roll with all res. You'll occasionally find white socket gear. What I like to do with the white socket gear is put it in my weapon swap. So that way it doesn't matter what gem you decide to level, you have, like, it's all the colors, right? Very, very beneficial. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff here. Yeah, all right, let's go. Now, this zone does incredibly high, um, what is the damage I'm referring to? Uh, cold and is it cold and fire i know it's cold for sure i would try not to stand still these mobs shoot the like this attack in the sky that comes down and just does really crazy amounts of damage so i would just kind of you know try to just cruise your way through here grab your waypoint same thing in this zone this zone the mobs are very crazy like really like these rares here i would honestly recommend you don't even try to fight them just go through over here to the right you're gonna find some unique guys here we go and we're gonna kill these remember that we haven't even ascended yet so we are Pretty much at our weakest point right now in the build. So this helmet is known as Skullhead. And it is a minion helmet. However, it's an incredibly strong helmet for Righteous Fire, for leveling. It rolls a natural life roll of, I think, 50 to 60. And I think it rolls around 20 all resistance. It's also an armor base. Just kidding, it doesn't have, it does not have life, but it has 20 resistance. So it's got like 200 base armor, and that is literally 60% total resistance on that helmet. So pretty good. What am I going to do with it? Throw it on the floor. All right, so now we got a bunch of Greaves here. There's this rare modifier you can find on monsters called Keeper of the Trove. You can't actually see it anymore because they took off the thing, I believe. But, but, all these boots have the potential to basically be an upgrade. Appreciate the raids, uh, subtract them. We're focusing on a campaign run right now, so I got minimal chat activity. How are you guys doing? Okay, this is a really good body armor for RF here to craft on. We can actually craft on this body armor and swap off our helmet, but we're not going to do that right now. So since our inventory is full, we're going to come back, check out these boots, see if any of them have really good movement speed with stats on them. Increased life regeneration rate is a prime stat we're going to use for the build a lot later. Uh, didn't really get anything. However, there's this unique recipe for five for one. You can take five boots, vendor them, re-identify, those boots actually would be sick. However, they don't have a prefix open, so I cannot craft movement speed on them. 
So we're just going to vendor these. We're going to go back through. Pick up that four link, put it to the side. Go kill Tukahama. So Tukahama has an invulnerability phase here. The invulnerability phase... Don't stand in that. The invulnerability phase, he spawns totems. I throw one fire trap and flammability, and then another fire trap. That usually is enough to kill them. You can also hug around them with your RF if you would like. Since I don't have combustion support on, it's a bit more inconsistent. Combustion gives you that really good ignite chance, which helps. Okay, grab your loot. Oh, actually, we can replace this flask here. Wait, did I just do that backwards? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, it's this exact same flask. Oh, never mind. Um, <clears throat> don't mind me. Going for our juicy explosive impact node. Then we're going to go scale some more armor. Got to be careful with those little explodey things on the floor. Um, they're known as bearers and uh, they do a lot of damage. You don't want to stand in those. I think I'm going backwards here. I can never really tell. Oh, scepter. And it's poop. How could I tell that it's poop? In my head, I look for a few modifiers. If it doesn't have fire multi, damage over time multi, a very high fire damage increase, or plus one fire gems, it's not worth looking at. It has none of those stats on it. I find PoE to be a lot more enjoyable when you can look at a piece of gear and kind of figure out what you want on that piece of gear. It makes it a lot easier to understand your progression. 25% movement speed on the boots. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. They're also armor base. We're going to go ahead and keep them inside the vent, or they're uh, right over here. Only problem is there's no life and I can't put life on them. So uh, let's keep that four link we were talking about and uh, vendor you and vendor you and you. Good. There's also no harm at throwing a transmutation on these. Um, this one here removes your righteous fire. If you ever have remove all burn, that removes your RF. I personally hate it, so I will not do that. Back to the prison. Ooh, armor scraps. Now these guys here, these rattling cages, are super tanky uh, when they are rare, so I skip those again, just because you don't really get anything special for killing them. And they are very tanky. Um, I'm also going to stop leveling the Frost Blink because it really doesn't matter at this point anymore. There's a two stone ring. Ooh, wow. Did you guys see that? I think I saw 73 life with a dex roll. Oh, I said I wasn't going to kill one and then I killed one. Whoopsie daisy. Seventy-three life, a dex roll, wow, and a resistance. Wow. That's a very good ring for this early on. That's like super good. Now let's go ahead and slap that on. We're gonna just replace this ring. We can look here. It's just literally a direct upgrade in every way. The life is higher. The resistances are higher. The dexterity is higher. It's good. Delete. 
I mean, I could delete it, but I deleted, like, all the gear at the beginning, so now everything I find is pretty much an upgrade, <laughs> so. But to be fair, that's a really good ring. Very good. Thirty less regen. Mmm, I didn't actually look at the fire res. You're not wrong. Yeah, that's true. Our regen is definitely like catching up to us now. You can tell we're not really regenerating that much. However, we are very close to doing our lab. We are like four bosses away, I think, from doing labyrinth. We have, let's see, we have Abarath, we have Rislotha, we have Brine King, and then we have like Malagaro in the next act. And then we're, you're, we're double ascending. So again, every level up we get now, we are going to feel a little weaker on our defenses because we are constantly gaining more life, but our regeneration is not able to keep up with us because they're all basically flat. But what I mean by flat is like flat life regeneration. Percent life regeneration will scale with level because as we get more life, it's healing us a bit more. But that's, we don't really have a lot of maximum life to scale percent life. So that comes in a little bit later. So now we are coming up to our next boss. Oh, did I, I actually forgot this boss. This is uh, Chavron. Yeah, so we got like Chavron and Brutus here, kind of like together, they're gonna tag team. So put your portal down, go fight him. So, <clears throat> this guy spawns first, and he does two things. He does a big slam, and he does this hook. Whenever he does this slam, it's usually in a tri like a trio, so it does one, two, three, and you can just dodge it. Chavron, you can kind of just go in a circle. She puts down these books you want to move away from, and she also jumps up in the sky and slams down. You don't want to be underneath her for that. Now we're back to Brutus. You can see he's doing the one, two, three, so we'll just go in a circle, and then he's going to shoot the hook we move out of the way and then pretty much just does the same thing over and over again he's dead grab the loot final crusade sees its first triumph. so from killing tukahama earlier the totem guy we actually unlocked what's known as the pantheon um so you can actually go ahead and allocate soul of tukahama when you go to your hideout it's not really a big deal right now we'll be using different pantheons later that we'll unlock very soon Okay, I want to say that we are now going down and grabbing Juggernaut. Let me go look at the POB. Right, so now we want to grab Purity of Flesh and Juggernaut. And then in the next set here, we are going towards... Down here, the Max Res, Soul of Steel, Bloodless, the Giga Regen, Heart of Warrior. Very good, very good. So we are on track, everything is going well. Next up, we get some more life. I must have time to gather my will. Okay, this boss, kind of a pain in the ass, does crazy amounts of fire damage. So. When you see, I don't really know how to explain it, but when he does that little hoof charge, he takes very little damage right now. He's kind of like enraged. You don't want to tank this guy. You want to just kite him. Now, he also shoots fireballs in your face, so you want to move out. And when you kill him, meteors start to come from the arena, so go through. You can also, as you're going through here, just chuck fire traps behind you. And you can watch your XP bar kind of just shoot up. During this next phase, he brings his gang. So now there's like goats to deal with as well. So I'm gonna just shoot that. When you see, when you see that like little thing that he did, I don't really know what it's called, the like little red aura, that's when the meteors start to come. So just pay attention. I think they come from this side first. And then he also shoots fireballs at you. So you wanna not really stand in front of his face, right? You wanna move around a lot on this fight. Killing him gets us a skill point, but we're gonna just continue on for a little bit here. Uh, there's no way it can be over here. Gotta go this way.
Okay, Western Forest. Now this boss, kind of tricky. This boss does chaos damage we're coming up against. So I'm going to really fast shoot back to town, grab the skill point that we just gained off of uh, Aberath. I think we get one from Chevron too? Yeah, we do. Cool. I don't care about this. I'm just... Actually... Actually... Huh. Interesting. We're using a four-link helmet for RF. We're going to take the Zealot Helm because it has armor on it. Identify it. And, uh... I mean, it's kind of okay, but, uh... I'm kind of too lazy to swap. It's not a bad idea to swap, though, because this helmet does give armor. I would just have to recolor it. And, like I said, I'm too lazy. So, here, we're going to go ahead and grab Purity of Flesh. We have to be careful. Our life is scaling kind of high and our regen is definitely falling behind. So we need to be careful and pay attention to our sustain. If you do start to degen with Righteous Fire around this level, remember you do want to still stack fire resistance. Very soon we will be ascending and regeneration will just shoot through the roof. Okay, this little broken road here, this is the indication that uh, the boss is over here. Or the new zone, and then in the new zone is the boss. Now, there is an option to take the mastery. I haven't taken it yet. Over here, you can actually take 8% uh, increased damage for each aura or herald skill affecting you. I don't remember if that counts Skitterbot. I mean, it has the green background, so it might. That is effectively just a really strong one-point damage node. Our damage has been incredible, so that's why I haven't really taken it. I have not had issues with damage at all. You can tell with the Massive Shrine, we are degening now. That's because Massive Shrine makes us thick, gives us a lot of HP. Uh, causes us to basically degen right now, right? So. If you don't want the massive shrine, you can right-click it off, but I cannot right-click a massive shrine. It's like a sin. Unless I'm playing Bone Shatter. Okay. Don't stand in front of the boss. She shoots a lot in front of her, so just kind of circle kite her. Port out. We get our skill point here. Get rid of this stuff. Don't forget to check your level. In the top right, you can see the zone level. So we are 50. And the zone is 48. Now, picking up blue flasks is not a bad idea. Blue flasks... It's basically like a free uh, alteration, or sorry, transmutation orb on it, right? So you could get some cool affixes like bubbling or seething. Um, they may not be called that anymore because there's tears now. Basically, bubbling is an instant flask with a little bit over time, and seething is just all upfront regeneration. If you find something that looks like this, these are known as six sockets if you vendor them. You sell it to the vendor, you'll get uh, six jeweler orbs, seven jeweler orbs back. I think there I just had a super heavy bleed on me. Seven. Yeah. I feel like this is like PoE trivia, man, because I never think about any of this stuff. I just do it, right? <laughs> I just do it. Oh, can I jump up here? <gasps> I don't know what that skip actually just did, but uh, cool. Oh. Now, here's something that happens to a lot of people. This monkey right over here has something called Executioner Mod. And when we walk by him, 
Oh, never mind. Sorry, it wasn't the monkey. It was something else that I killed. So there is this modifier called Executioner. Maybe it was the poison stacks. It's a good time to talk about it now. The Executioner mod, it prevents you from healing above 50% life. The problem with this modifier with RF is it basically means that we will degen to 50% and then we can heal again. So it basically can permanently pull you down to 50%. When you see those types of monsters, I personally try to kite them with my uh, fire trap. But late game, when you have good enough damage, you can kind of just kill them really fast. It's not really a problem. Yes, another good option is uh, swapping your mastery to the less damage taken mastery um, for some more sustain because our damage is already really good. In fact, that's a very good idea. I'm just going to go ahead and switch that now. Pretty sure in the POB we have it. I think this boss is still following me. That's kind of funny. Okay. Let's go ahead and respec this node into less damage taken from over time. And then I'm going to go down here and start getting Juggernaut for more life. Now... There are uh, golems here. I don't know if it's in this zone or the next zone. You don't want to mess with the golems. They have incredibly high physical damage, and they are known to one-shot you. Uh, they do kind of like this pound slam attack, and especially if they have extra damage modifiers on them from being rare, it is very likely that you shield charge into the pack, they all clap, and you go down instantly. That has nothing to do with an RF build. That's just the monsters being very strong. I think we want to go this way. Next zone, got it. Oh, the second Quicksilver. We're going to want that. I'm just going to replace the sulfur right now for it. Let's get up here. Okay. Now, this is kind of like EOE's version of an escort quest. You got to escort this totem thing. So, just follow along with it. Chuck your fire traps. It's actually a fuel canister. You know what? You're right. It is a fuel canister because we light the uh, we light the thing after. I see that. That's actually what it is. I'm actually just gonna drop this now because I want to hold the extra six socket. Also, just notice that monster we just killed there. If you want to pause and go back kind of emitted emit emit it emit a green pulse that green pulse is known as rejuvenator it's another one of the anti-righteous fire mods it basically lowers your total recovery however um there comes a point again where you're just so geared and have so much sustain you don't really notice it you only really notice this on extremely tanky targets That thing is scary. Don't don't let that hit you. That's another modifier known as Lightning Mirage uh, that spawns on rare monsters. These are all kind of just little tips I'm, I'm teaching you. Lightning Mirage is known to kill players when they want to look at loot on the floor. Be careful with that one. Okay. Now there's this fun little mini game you can play here. Uh, it's called How Many Frost Blinks Does It Take? So you click this, then you click it again. There's a sweet spot up here where you can actually frost blink directly down to here. So see how many clicks it takes you. Oh, 42 life with some regen. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good.
Okay, we're gonna go back and vendor some of this stuff, and now we are in evil golem territory. Okay, let's see, what is this flask cap? Bubbling, nice. It's not called bubbling, but I can see bubbling because of the, the modifiers there. So we're gonna put this on right there. Get rid of this one. I don't think I'm actually gonna use this. Okay, let's go. Okay, we got an acceleration shrine, so I'm gonna just kind of zoom through this zone a little. Never really know where to go, but the acceleration shrine makes it easier. I think it's right over here. Just to show you the golems, I saw a rare one earlier. Uh, this guy, I'm gonna let him... Okay, that stunned my character. If you get stunned, you probably got hit pretty hard. Okay. Brian King time. So I'm gonna teach you some uh, Brian King cheese here for the newer players to help you out a lot. I'm gonna have a couple of portal scrolls for this. So step one, anytime a boss talks shit to you, hold down right click, throw your fire traps, make them pay for talking. So here, this phase here, you don't want to be close because you take a lot of damage. Okay. So now whenever Brian King does this, there's a dodge phase where you have to dodge these on the floor. If you stand in the water, you take a heavy degen, right? So on the next phase of this, I'll show you a trick you can do to make the fight much easier. Okay, so now we're in the next phase. Click your portal, teleport, then teleport back, drink your coffee, and wait. During this phase, you have your grace period, which is your immunity, so you don't take any damage. Okay, and now we're going again. You can do the exact same thing. I'm just going to pre-throw some fire traps to get ready. Oh boy, I was not paying attention there. I was reading my chat. All right, down they go. Okay, this here, Brian King, you cannot be stunned if you have been stunned or blocked. Uh, basically, this prevents you from getting chain stunned. It is very nice. They nerfed boss portals in PoE too. Yeah, but they didn't nerf it in PoE, so you can still do it. Twenty-seven cold multi. Jeez. I'm also gonna sell the region amulet. I don't really want it right now. Let us continue. We are so close to ascending. I am excited. So close. Into 
Chamber of Sins. Actually supposed to I kind of did this out of order but it's totally fine it's right over here there's gonna be a waypoint let's hit our waypoint here we go down we need to go and acquire this item first Levels just come so quickly now. It's so nice. The shield charge through and the RF takes care of it. Okay, so in here, don't forget you want to be doing your uh, labyrinths. I'm personally not doing the trials. It's it's not really anything I can teach you in there. You just go run the trial and you click the little thing and then you can go ascend. I'll be doing the lab itself so you can actually see us in the labyrinth. Here, we're going to go back to Chamber of Sins 2. Talk to Silk. Actually, I don't think we need to. Put this in. Go inside the Sanctum. Speaking of Sanctum, I can't wait till Sanctum comes back. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a bit more difficult, I think, now. But I think that makes it more enjoyable. Oh, that mob is ghosted. I like killing ghosted mobs because they have a decent chance at dropping uniques. Hey, look, a unique. That is Torch Oak Step. Okay, inside Malagaro's workshop. So I'm going to name off a couple of uniques if you manage to find during the run. They're really good for RF. Rise of the Phoenix for early game. Immortal Flesh for all throughout the game. That's a belt. The Kizaru Ring is really good. Le Hoop is really good. Pyre Ring is incredibly strong. Uh, Wanderlust Boots in general are very good. All of those are pretty solid. And there's a lot more you could get. Uh, Thrill Thirst is a helmet that grants permanent onslaught for speed. Pretty much any build can use that. Evil may hide, but the light will. Okay. So now we can go ascend. So this key allows us to open up this right here. And I believe this here is where the last lab trial is for Cruel Lab. So I'm going to stop right here. We're going to go ascend right now. Back to back. Let's go. So I'm going to go ahead and sell. Uh, where is it here? This and I don't need Torch Oak. So I'm going to get rid of that. Let's go. Do I get a skill point now? I don't, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, we're going to go to Act 3. And we're going to go inside here. And what you can do here is if you are confused on where to find any of these, you can actually hover over them, so I'll talk about each one. So, Lower Prison in Act 1, Crypt... Uh, Crypt level 1 in Act 2, Chamber of Sins level 2 in Act 2, Crematorium in Act 3, 
Catacombs in Act 3, and Imperial Gardens in Act 3. It's 1, 2, and 3, if that makes any sense. Okay. So, Labyrinth here can be a little tricky just because we have very bad sustain at the moment. Everything will change very soon. I kind of just like to hug right. I have a... I don't know. I don't really enjoy Labyrinth a lot, so I just kind of brute force my way through it. I just want to be out of it and get my rewards basically right. So I hug right and try to go as fast as possible. So this here is Azaro. So this is our first one. Remember that this is normal lab. So he's level 33 and we're level 53. He's just going to die. He's going to just literally fall over and die. Pretty sure you could just flam ability him and he will just die. Yes, it's also a nice time to plug uh, the website POE Lab, I believe, if you need help with navigating your labyrinth a little bit quicker. Manic. Ooh, acceleration shrine. Oh, look, the trial. Sometimes Azaro likes to talk a lot before he goes down. It's kind of toxic in my opinion. Okay, we are so close to the first lab, and I'll show you why I don't care too much for the first lab specifically. Uh-oh. There we go. He is toxic, man. You, like, phase him and he just sits there whacking you for another 20 seconds because he wants to. It's rude. Any other boss, you kill him and he's just dead. So, this is taking us here. We're just going to go inside it. He just feels lonely. What do you mean lonely? He's got his pet Argus, man. He's got his lifelong companion. check that door here is this aspirant's trial oh we're done An aspirant can afford to be promising. An emperor argus does not like to be pet poor argus you are free the shadow scepter could be good but there's no way right it's not good okay Open up whatever you want here. Now, me personally, um, I don't really care for glove enchants, and that's what you are offered here, so I, I just don't really care for it. What I care about is ascending, and make sure you pick Inquisitor. After you've taken Inquisitor, you want to grab Sanctuary. I'm going to just get out of here because he just keeps talking. Okay, so the reasoning I don't rush this right away is consecrated ground you you create applies 15% increased damage taken to enemies, which is a lot of damage. When monsters are taking an increase from you, it's a multiplier because we have very little ways to scale that, right? Usually we're stacking increases on ourselves. You have consecrated ground while you are stationary. The problem with being stationary is if you've watched me play, I am never stationary, right? So I never get the consecrated ground buff like ever. So now we're going to go into Cruel Lab, and because this one's a bit more dangerous, if you want to just play without your Righteous Fire on, that's totally okay. Once we finish this, the whole build is going to feel so different. Just you wait. This is where I mean they can be a little bit dangerous here, right? With these traps when we don't have good sustain. Okay. 
Okay, here's our first trial. Now, do know that Bizarro hits pretty hard here in general. You don't want to intentionally tank anything. So I like to do my circle strafing, and when you see him charging a big hit, I just frost blink to the opposite side. So if you watch here, big hit, charge away. Look at him again. Okay, he went away. Wow, this place sucks. Oh, I didn't actually check where we are. Let's see. Okay, sure. There's always multiple ways to go through Labyrinth, so we could have taken a different route, but this is where I went, so... Let's just keep going. My strategy? Hug right. It works 90% of the time. Okay, this takes us here, and then... Now we just go across right here, and... The trial should be like... Ooh, Artisan, let's open that. Then run away. I always like to run away from the boxes, because in case they have detonate dead. That right there should be the trial. That's the trial. When the time comes to strike, an emperor strikes without hesitation. The emperor beckons to entertain and the world is the death. dodge with your frost blink what's nice about frost blink is if you hit a unique target the cooldown goes down oops a daisy massively did not mean to blink into that one sometimes that's a it's a good conversation about golem part of the reasons i actually dislike golems is because when i'm focusing on a boss fight i it's hard for me to pay attention to where the golem is i'm mainly just looking at the boss and myself so when i see the boss wind up 99% of the time, they're going to hit me in a normal circumstance. Once you add a golem into play, you now have to pay attention to where the golem is because they may be attacking the golem instead of attacking you. And this is why I hate using golems later on unless I'm specifically playing a summoner build, right? So that's why it gets dropped later alongside the fact that it dies a lot. It's almost time. I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait. So that green little thing he does ports you around the, the map. Let's just go ahead. We click that. We're good. What I like to do is um, once you finish lab, run right away and click that because in case you disconnect, if you've hit that altar, you got your points. So now we'll uh, we'll go ahead and click the divine font here, whatever it's called, and we're going to hope we get movement speed on our boots. We didn't. Uh, this doesn't really matter. This is a little bit of a uh, chance to uh, ignite for our fire trap, so it's not too bad. Okay. And now here is... The awesome part about Inquisitor RF. You'll notice my energy shield is zero. You'll notice my life regen is 490. That 490 life regen is about to turn into, I think, what is it, 610? So it's going to go from 490 to 631 with 631 energy shield regen. Actually, a little bit more because we get life regen here. So when I select this, there's a good chance my ES goes... Brrr. Okay, it didn't... Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yep, there goes the ES. So what just happened now is we now have 642 life regen 
and 642 ES regen. If your ES is not degening, that means you literally have this number in life regen. So I have 642 life regen, so I effectively am healing one third of my entire life pool per second. And I have a tiny bit of ES regen now. I can't tell the exact ES regen. I'd have to open up POB. I know it's positive because I'm not degening. So one of the tricks now with Inquisitor is if you stare up at the top here where it says Consecrated Ground, you want to perform an action every four seconds, at least every four seconds to maintain that buff. The reason that's very important is if you don't have that Consecrated Ground up, you're basically not playing Inquisitor Righteous Fire. May as well just play a Juggernaut. These boots have 108 life, which is kind of crazy. That's better than them. So now we're going to go ahead and jump back to where we were, and you can see the crazy difference. Hello to you, great the nice thing about keeping up the Consecrated Ground is any action you perform literally will scale or uh, will refresh the Consecrated Ground. If you Frost Blink, even though it's instant, it'll still refresh it because there's like a 0.01 delay time at the end. If you Shield Charge, Flammability, Fire Trap, it doesn't matter what it is, it will completely instantly refresh that Consecrated Ground. So this is the powerhouse that is Inquisitor. You will see the, the sustain kind of bounce around now like crazy. This effectively turns any form of life regen into a times two so if you got one life regen it's actually two because you don't get one life regen you get one life regen and then one es regen this the only exception here is recovery um there are not many sources of recovery so you don't really have to worry but life recovery um does not work for your energy shield as well so that one would only apply to your life pool and you can always just check because you can just look at your your values right here. So now we are going to continue going down and going through over here. I believe you also have an option if you choose to, if you want more damage for some reason during the campaign, you could come on over here and grab Breath of Flames, Heart of Flames. But right now we're going to focus on our survivability. We're going to acquire some more maximum elemental res because this is when the bosses start doing a lot more damage. So from here on out, we're kind of going to just zip through a little bit faster. We have the core part of our build like set up. We have pretty much the gems we're going to use. Um, I would like to still recolor for Fire Trap to get Combustion, but our damage is really good, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, we are, we're not really getting anything new. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the gear. Um, I would like to update our helmet and our shield and maybe our amulet, but it's not the end of the world, so you don't really have to worry. Now, one of the things about the Consecrated Ground is you want to stay close to your target, otherwise you're not getting the big damage bonus. So you'll notice here, the bosses are going to spawn here. You want to stand right next to them to drop that Consecrated Ground. Groost, however, you have to be a little careful because he does this crazy multi-hit, assuming he actually survives long enough, where he'll charge up his, like, throw, and he'll go boom, 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 and throw a bunch of them. It might actually kill you, so you might want to be careful for that. So from here, we're going to go ahead and move on forward. Even though there's a zone right there, we're going to come back for it. We are going now to go get, uh, is it Yina? I think it's Yina who wants fireflies. If you want to use Flame Dash instead of Frost Blink, you absolutely can. Remember that movement skills are preference. If you don't like Shield Charge, you could try using um, Leap Slam. If you want to be more caster oriented, you could use Lightning Warp. 
I personally cannot ever not use shield charge. To me, it's the smoothest skill, but it definitely has a little bit of a, a learning curve because you can constantly get stuck on so many different, like, little pebbles and stuff like that. Did I cross blank there? No. Now, there is also something very interesting. Inquisitor gets like a super crazy defensive skill, and that super crazy defensive skill is called Frost Shield. Frost Shield, um, what it allows you to do is sacrifice a portion of your, well, it basically like starts to drain your energy shield, but it gives you incredibly strong defenses via damage mitigation while inside the Frost Shield and monsters attacking outside of it. It's not really something you have to use early on. If you want to try it, you can. Just be a little weary if you don't have enough sustain to use it. It's something I usually put in probably like closer to yellow and red maps. So I'd say like above level 80 or so. You forgot the star? Oh yeah, there's actually the Kishara star. I don't know how I missed that. It's literally a skill point. I don't know how I do that every time. So if we could go back right here to the causeway, there is a little... Uh, where is it? It's here somewhere, right? It's like right over here. Right there. That, right there. See that? That exclamation mark? You don't want to miss that. That's a skill point. I don't know how I do it every time. Yeah, it's right by the exit. I don't know how I miss it. I think it's just because I'm not really looking at the screen. I'm just kind of speaking, right? Oi. Over here. Oi. How do I move the map? Uh, I use my arrow keys. Okay, portal back. Go back to the northern forest. Go inside the dread thicket. Make sure you have inventory space here to pick up, I think it's seven fireflies. Over here is a boss who does very heavy physical damage alongside degens. Again, stand on top of the boss, throw your fire traps. He'll spawn these shadows here. Um, just don't stand still and you'll probably be fine. Again, by this point, your damage should be very, very good. Most of these bosses won't even really get to do their, their mechanics. Missing one firefly here somewhere. There it is. This is neither the time nor the place. Fair wind. Whence the trouble to me that humanity sees. Okay. Let's grab Warrior's Blood. Very strong regeneration node. And now I'm going to go towards Prismatic Skin here. I have to be careful not to level some gems in case I do not have enough of a stat. I mean, your fire trap has a heavy dex requirement, but you have access to dexterity here, dexterity here, and you should just be on the lookout for getting dexterity. As for what gems you don't want to level, they're explained in the POB in the first skill section. It's not a super big deal.
Okay, so we're coming across Arakali, known as, uh, you know, the evil spider boss. She does a lot of damage because she does chaos damage. Chaos damage will bypass energy shield. The only time it doesn't seem like it's bypassing is a lot of chaos damage is hybrid. When I say a hybrid, it's like 50% physical and 50% physical converted to chaos. So the 50% physical would hit your energy shield pool and the other part would just bypass and hit right to your life pool. No build really has good chaos res by this point. I guess maybe some occultist builds. Um, so you just have to be a little careful. Chaos resistance is typically looked at as more of a premium in PoE. Not really something you get right away. However, as Inquisitor, we do get access to a really... Uh, well, actually, not even Inquisitor, but in the Templar area, we get access to a really nice node. Um, or not even a node, it's a mastery. So right over here, at Faith and Steel, you can take 10% of your armor applies to chaos damage taken from hits. This will be very strong once we pick up our Determination Gem. Can't make the jump. Where am I going? I guess it's uh, over to the right. Okay, we're at Weaver. Don't forget to drop a TP. Do not let that ghost go inside. Do not... Nope, bad ghost. That ghost possessed that boss. It would have been a little spooky. Just to give a showcase of the regeneration here, I will go ahead and... Uh, I'll go ahead and get hit by an attack here so you can see the regen. So here, I'll just like stand over here. See the reject? Hmm, are there boots there? Why don't you let the ghost go in here for the real player experience? Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's already dead. Sorry. Let's go back to the hideout. Render some of this stuff. Speed through. Grab a max res node. Must have time to gather fuel. This is actually an interesting thing to bring up with the new tormented spirit changes. It might make the campaign a little bit more difficult because uh, they get massive damage reduction now, so they can actually inhabit targets like ghosts or uh, bosses. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of spooky indeed. Is neither the what foul new corruption is this? Okay, 
Uh, so this place is actually really annoying because there's a bunch of chaos damage over time. You won't notice it because your life regen's so high. I heard a four link. Hmm. Wouldn't work. Nope, we just went in a big circle. Whoops, it easy. Interesting colors for a pure armor. Okay, so when you get here, this is what I like to call tank testing. You should be able to effectively click this and go completely AFK for this fight. There are some instances where you will not be able to do this, but I'll go ahead and give an example of it right now. So let's go ahead and see. Even though she does very heavy physical damage, we have very high regeneration. Now, unfortunately, this makes us deal way less damage. So that's like 70% less damage. So I am going to go ahead and kind of just open it. But you can get an idea of the sustain of our character, right? Now, if I were to just curse with flammability, that would give us so much more damage, right? The only problem with Dodre here that you have to be careful for is that she will essentially put down these balls and she can attack you or slam you in the same time that those explode, thus making you take a lot of damage, right? You got to be very careful about that. Okay, so here we need to look for one of these side areas. So you can kind of see the side area right there. Uh, we need to grab this little onk. If you do not get this, you have to run all the way back. So make sure you get this first. Look out for those little uh, kind of like indentations, those little bridge things. Yeah, I'm not going to redo the Juggernaut campaign run. It's a lot of work and the video is still very much applicable. The only thing that actually changed on the patch notes was one point on the passive tree. Inside the resurrection site, and we can go kill this guy.
Oh, a five link drop. But it's a sword. Okay. Now we can go back into that, see that little area right here? This area right here will take us to the next zone. Okay, I don't think it's there because there's a vault side area, so it should be right down here. Okay, this here has one of my favorite mini bosses in the game. Very excited. Still a good idea to pick up boots since I'm not on the uh, like 30% movement speed boots yet. I think even 25 I could, yeah, I could still upgrade. I could upgrade a lot of my gear here, but I'm not going to intentionally just because uh, this is going to take some more time on the video, and I don't really think it's super necessary. I'm also a bit tired, so I want to I wanna finish up this campaign run. Okay, so right over here is my favorite part of the campaign. You can see this lineup right here, these chads, right? So we're gonna throw one fire trap here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for good luck. Perfect, that's plus one skill point. Beautiful. You wanna follow the dead guys here? I'm pretty sure it takes you out of the area to the next zone. All right, let's go. Perfect. Oh, is that a ghosted guy? Oh. Ghosted rares are good for dropping uniques. Oh, I didn't get one there. That's all right. Ooh, alteration. Wink. It's not a bad idea to click these Voltaxic Sulfites. Even if you're not doing the mechanic, they can drop a card that rewards you with 10 alterations that you can redeem. At, um, Lily? Yeah, Lily Roth you can redeem cards at. Here is the Executioner mod, if I can show it. See it right there, that debuff? That's the Executioner mod where you cannot recover your life and ES above 50%. A little hard to find sometimes because these mobs die very quickly. Okay, so inside here we want to find the waypoint because we are going to come back and use it. So the waypoint is on the first floor, so let's go ahead and look for that. Here we go, waypoint, perfect. Now we're just looking for the boss. It's actually a decent body armor to pick up. We could craft that for a fire trap, but too lazy. Ooh, another four link helmet. Ooh, double six socket. Very nice. Okay, this guy is pretty easy. He does this Scorching Ray attack, but if you have good regen, then 
It doesn't really do anything, so you don't really have to worry. Okay. Wait for his little thing to drop. Take your portal. Hop through your waypoint to go back. Then we just go the opposite way here to exits. Okay. Now we are looking for, I think it's called Harbor Bridge. So we're going to go through here, take this, and it gets right, right here. Perfect. All right. So what you can do here is when you see blue packs down below or big packs of mobs, you can actually just throw a fire trap. It's a really good leveling place. see in like under a minute we've already gained like 15% XP all right now from here we can go ahead and go to the other boss we've actually have a couple things to do here so Let's first go down here and go to one of the rippiest zones in the campaign. So down over here in the bathhouse. Uh, not here, but the next zone. Always confuse this zone with the other one. Or not confuse it, but forget where to find it. Um, there's this guy here who like charges and doesn't really do anything. You can just kill him if you want. Um, that's like his quest thing. I think it gives you a jewel. I don't actually remember what it gives you. Um, not a skill point, so completely optional. I think over here is always the labyrinth. I swear I always find the labyrinth here. Okay, no, I actually found the right one. So this is the high gardens. This place is very dangerous. Um, so these mobs here, you will learn to hate forever, permanently, always. Um, these guys right here. These are called porcupines, and they explode on death, shooting out spikes. With RF, you run into their face and kill them instantly, and then they instantly explode. So this is another reason why you want to make sure you are focusing on keeping your armor value up. Some of them explode dealing cold damage. I think with cold spikes, they can have damage mods on them. So this is a primary reason why you want to focus on defenses um, with this type of build, right? Regeneration is just regeneration. It's not everything, right? But that's okay, because if you're following the Inquisitor Guide, eventually you will convert into block-based, and block is very, very comfy for multi-hit attacks. Uh, these are not really multi-hit, but you kill 15 of them at the same time, like that. So that's basically like getting hit multiple times, right? <laughs> Granite Flask helps a lot here as well. Okay, this boss does a lot of damage as well. Super big degens, uh, but we're pretty much okay. You want to just dodge these, and then he spawns a bunch of adds. So for this fight, I actually do like to not try to face tank, and I kind of just throw the fire traps. Whenever your life regen does not go up, it means you're effectively taking, like, I don't know, six to 700 damage per second, which you're not noticing because the regen really carries you. So just remember that if you're taking crazy amounts of damage, or sorry, if you're not regening crazy amounts of HP, chances are there's a crazy degen on you. Now, a little while ago, I forgot to mention this, when we killed, I think it was, uh, Rolakesh, Roost? I forgot who it was. Anyway, um, I guess, yeah, Rolakesh. Who is Rolakesh again? I forgot. Anyway, this is a very, very strong node for us. This basically is very good for the lazy player style like myself, where we don't have to worry about running a bleed removal flask. We can actually use Rolakesh as our primary form of anti-bleed. Uh, you'll get bled with full ES and full life because it doesn't really do much damage. So, really like that node. And on top of that, 
we go over here and take Corrupted Blood immune. So now we're immune to Corrupted Blood, and Bleed virtually does nothing. So, two very annoying mechanics eliminated from the game. Let's continue on. So we don't need to go here, because this just connects here. So now we're going back to the Concourse. Um, before we go to the Concourse, let's go ahead and redeem some skill points. So this might be from Yugle. Then there's another one over here from, uh, I don't remember who. And then you from fighting the trio, I think. Yeah, okay. Now, from here, I'm going to swing down two points. Uh, but before I do this, let's pay attention to the POB. So I'm level 59. Let's go open up the POB. So this here is for level uh, 55 through 70. So 55 through 70, we have pretty much everything here. Uh, I just don't have this mastery. You can totally get it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, I've got the recovery mastery. We path through here. So we want to grab Heart of the Warrior and Soul of Steel. Soul of Steel is huge. More importantly on Soul of Steel, something I could have done earlier. I can't actually do it, but it, a nice tip. 1% to all maximum elemental resistance if equipped helmet, body armor, gloves, and boots all have armor. Incredibly strong mastery. This has pure energy shield, and this is energy shield evasion, so I can't make use of that just yet. So we will not be taking that. Instead, I am going to go ahead and grab Heart of the Warrior for the incredible life scaling, and then we're grabbing Soul of Steel next, I believe. We can't actually do the aura pivot yet, because... Uh, well, we don't have the nodes yet, right? Yes. Let's get rid of this stuff. Did That's you? fine. Okay. Now we come across two very bursty bosses. Drop your portal. You know, um, ooh, I forgot, sorry. Made a little mistake there. We need to go get Lunaris first. Can't actually summon them yet. Yeah, you, so uh, we actually utilize, um, we use the sun orb and the moon orb to summon them. Doesn't work if you only have one. <laughs> so let's go ahead real fast and uh, let's go grab the, uh, the moon orb there. So we are same level as the zone, so I'm just going to zoom through everything. I don't really care too much. If there's a blue pack, I may, you know, curse it. Oh, here we go. They're like a fire trap, but for the most part, we're just zooming through this stuff. Don't really have to worry. Or chats having a field day answering the questions they get a a little glimpse of what I have to go through <laughs> okay let's see going this way fingers hurt from all this typing yo copy paste man Copy paste, dude. People are hitting you with the copy paste questions. It deserves a copy paste answer. I mean, 
I don't think you need to call it rude. It's explained, you know, what I'm playing. It's just, if people don't want to read the title, I think there's nothing wrong with giving a copy-paste answer. You shouldn't put meaningful amounts of effort into responding to a copy-paste question. You know, we save that more for the discussion-based questions. get burnt out, man. Okay. Let's see. Going, keep on going. Okay, we're basically at the boss now. So this boss has uh, really just one deadly attack. Uh, and you also have to be careful. There's a blue pack of monsters at the north side here. Um, never mind, I'm drunk. I don't know what I'm talking about. So this boss here... I think I'm thinking about the map. That's what it is. I'm thinking about the map, Moon Temple. Uh, you can preset by throwing these. They have one dangerous attack where they, like, charge up their bow and shoot, like, three attacks in a row. Just be careful about that. Okay, so grab this. Cool to the touch. And within. Let's go through. Now we can go fight the bosses. Okay, you have to kill one of them first. I always forget. I just hit them till they die. Okay, looks like the fire one. Okay, now this one. There's a lot of stuff to dodge here. A little tricky to dodge it all, so just put a portal down. This boss here is super bursty, and these rocks from the other boss is really bursty. I just say don't stand in one spot. Just kind of keep jumping around. Your fire trap does crazy amounts of damage, so don't worry too much about trying to stay close to them. Just try to just try to dodge. Okay, cool. They're done. Let's move on. Oh, I don't want to touch the delirium. One of the really nice leveling zones. If you remember very early on into the video, wow, I can't believe it's same video. Uh, I told you about how on the side areas of a zone that looks just like this, there's always a, a blue pack of monsters at the end. The same logic applies here. He even has the same mini boss, so the little chicken here is going to spawn, right? Oh, just kidding. There's no chicken here. I totally knew that first time, by the way. Uh, let's see here. So, um, here's a pack of blue mobs over here. Yep, very good. The goal would be to get the video out tomorrow. It's going to take a long time for it to upload something like this, and my editor has to go through and clip a few times where I had to go use the restroom or go AFK. I actually think it was only once, so not that much work on their end. Um, the goal is to get the video uploaded over the weekend so you guys can do a test run over the weekend because I know that's when most of you guys have time to play. So that is my primary goal is to get to play it over the weekend, you know, before the new league starts.
Yeah, the POBs on the wiki say 3.21, but they're ready to use. There will still be some adjustments here and there, but they are ready to use. The main reason it still says 3.21 is because POB is not updated. Um, there were virtually no changes in the patch notes, so there's not much to change. Okay, so here we are looking for a waypoint and the like little storm thing. Okay, good. We got the waypoint. Let me just backtrack a bit. I think it's somewhere down here. Oh, here we go. This thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need this. Start getting Soul of Steel. Now, it might be better, actually, to come down and grab, like, Champion of the Cause. I think that allows you to run Determination. I'd have to go look at the POB. I'm not too worried on it. This is the only part that's being changed in the patch. This is being moved down here. So it's an extra one point to get to it. But we don't take it super late game anyway. So it's really just a change for leveling. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Okay, let's go ahead and move across. I must have time to gather. Where are we going? It's just a... No, okay, it's down here, I think. Perfect. Now there's another waypoint over here we kind of want to find it's not the biggest deal in the world if we don't find it but it would be nice to find it is it right there could it be right there well, i don't know it's fine Ooh, let's go up here i like shrines they have big density ah oh, perfect the waypoint now over here there's like a little chimera thingamabobber that we we kind of need uh, I believe it's for a bonus skill point. Still think you're going to go Jug? That's good. Juggernaut is a very strong ascendancy. Unfortunately, a lot of people have this perspective where, you know, I'm playing the better version. They're both extremely strong. There, there isn't, I don't really believe there's a better. I can only say that based off of your play style, your knowledge of defensive layers, one of them will suit you, right? what I love about PoE. There's so many unique ways you can build the same skill. Here we go. This thing. This is what we want right here. It will petrify you, so you have to be a little careful, but it doesn't really do much. We out-regen most of it. Jug is much easier to get off the ground, but lower ceiling. Inquisitor, if you got the currency, can go bonkers. I disagree, but that's okay. I think both of them have a phenomenal ceiling, and if you're unable to achieve it, it's due to lack of knowledge. Or skill, whatever you prefer to term, or term you, whatever term you prefer to use. Um, did I screw this part up? No, okay, here. We get this here, and we're good to go. Very good. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I think a, a small majority, small minority of people are too hung up on, you know, one being better than the other. And the reality is, if you're a better player, you can do everything with both. And they both have a very similar end result. That's it. Full stop. There are also many different ways to play both of them. There's not just one way to play. This, all of a sudden, makes it so difficult to compare, you know, the four different variants of Juggernaut you can play versus the four different variants of Inquisitor. Then you have to factor in, you know, the currency cost of both of them or all of them. Then you have to factor in which one is meta costing more currency. I think it doesn't matter. It's all irrelevant, right? Pick the version that you like and play it and you will have a good time. Play something because someone tells you to but don't like the playstyle. You're going to end up burning out of Path of Exile and not enjoy yourself. Breakpoint, thanks for the one year, dude. Appreciate it. Oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to be calling those out. Guys, stop subscribing. I'll call them out later. Okay. I have, like, a bunch of subs I gotta call out later. <clears throat> okay. So, over here, you don't really have to worry much with this boss. Um, what I was doing earlier, sorry, I got a little distracted. You have to keep kind of walking with the boss. If you don't walk with the boss, it's not gonna, like, progress. So you got to just kind of like inch your way through with the boss. Um, when you are in quicksand, you kind of get slowed. Um, your RF is still on. It's just underground. So you kind of can't see it. GGG underground RF MTX when please. I would love to purchase one. Now we're going to go back and we're going to go ahead and acquire a skill point. Oh, you killed. Yum. Very much. Perfect. into the tunnel so over here in the tunnel uh there is another labyrinth ascendancy that you can or labyrinth trial sorry there we go yeah. labyrinth trial that you can get if you feel squishy at this point don't forget it's important for you to get your armor up my armor is kind of low here i do believe in the pob if you look at it there is a point where we fit in Scar, I'm sorry, uh, Determination. Uh, that is a massive form of armor. That's basically all of our armor. I'm just neglecting it again because I kind of want to just zoom through a little bit. But uh, definitely follow the POB if you want a better overall character. Let's look for that little feather. Where are you? I got a little mini boss on the side here. Where is it gonna be? Here it is. Okay, this boss has these like tornadoes. They do damage to you, but they don't really because we're RF, so if you want to hug the tornadoes, it's totally okay. The sandstorm thing also does damage to you, but we're RF, so it's okay. You can tell I'm taking damage over time because the ES isn't there, but we still have so much life regen, it doesn't go to the life regen yet, right? So we're still fine. Good. In fact, I'm pretty sure what I 
could do right now um, is actually drop Vitality and drop Skitterbots and just run Determination Purity of Elements. Uh, and that, I mean, our damage is still very good and you'd be a lot more tanky. That's another option to do. I'd say that's probably better for the newer player as well. Since uh, you don't really know exactly what you don't want to tank, right? As a newer player, kind of just go face into everything and then learn through experience on what is dangerous. I'm going the wrong way here. Oh no, I am. Oh no, maybe I'm not. Did I pick up the feather? Yep. It's true, we can go turn the feather in for another bonus skill point. What's going on here? Okay. I dislike this zone a lot. I don't dislike it as much as the Vol, like, ruins area, but I don't like this zone. Now, we're coming across a boss here who does very big damage. So, we do not really want to face tank this boss. So, drop a portal right over here if you need it. So, pay attention to when he... That, right there. Is it that? That, that one. You just walk away here. It's okay. Just throw some fire traps. Yeah, he's dead. Look, another skull helm. You can walk by and click this little thing over here. Portal back. Perhaps for once, something good will come. Not okay. Uh, I'm just going to convert a few portal scrolls here. So I am turning wisdoms into portals. Okay. Good. Um, so I think I'm supposed to, uh, let's go open the POB. So I am 62 right now. Let's open up the path of building and take a look. Okay. So this here is 30 to 55. Let's go to 55 to 70. Tree 55 through 70. And items 55 through 70. So I'm supposed to be running determination Purity of Elements and Skitterbot. You should keep Vitality until the second Aura Wheel. You can then drop it for Skitterbot. Right. So that's basically explaining that you get your Determination when you go here. Uh, if I take this back actually to here, uh, where are we? Okay, we're still running Vitality and Purity of Elements, so that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So in here, um, we're basically, like I said, when we come down here, we're going to go ahead and grab our determination. But I'm going to flip this around if I have the sockets. Do I have the sockets? Um, yeah, I'm just going to turn off Vitality now. Then I am going to go backwards now. So let's go over to Act 3. Let's buy the determination gem. If we had it leveled this whole time, it would have been a little higher level, like one level. It's not a big deal, though. It, it's still going to be so much armor. So we're going to slap that in. Then I'm going to go to the query here. We're going to turn on our determination and our armor is going to shoot up by like almost three times. So I'm going to turn off Skitterbot, turn on determination. I could even, I think, still run Vitality, um, but I don't have an open red socket, so I'm leaving Vitality alone. And we're good to go. So, since we have 20 jewelers, what I'm going to do now, actually, is I am going to jeweler my gloves, the ones we picked up in, like, Act 2 or something. And we're going to try to get another socket. I think you can get, you can definitely get three sockets, for sure, on this. Uh, this will just actually get us Vitality back, I think. Perfect. So, Determination, Frost Blink, and then Vitality. So, let's take a look. No Skitterbot right now. Go away. Determination. And I cannot actually run Vitality. I don't have enough MP. But that is okay. So what I'm going to do now, since you guys are not on the same patch as me, because you'll be in the new patch, I'm going to intentionally hold one skill point. Um, actually, because I'm going to forget about the skill point, I'm literally going to just like put it... No, I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to hold it because it's an extra level to get these auras now. You need to go here and then here, right? 
So actually, I guess I'll just put another strength point in. We'll just put two strength points in, and that's fine. I'm just trying to get the most accurate representation that I possibly can for you. I think for me, the, the big swap on using the term is after our ascendancy. So once you ascend at 55, you don't really need vitality anymore. You can still use it if you want. That's where determination really kicks in. Okay, so I'm going to put this here because this is where the aura node would normally be. How do I know that it changed? I read the patch notes. If you see items drop like this, it means they're fractured. What fractured items are is it's an item that has a permanent stat on it that no matter what you do, like if you try to use an orb of chaos on it, that fractured item will always stay, like the stat. So if I ID this, this lightning damage will never go away no matter what I do. So if I alteration it, it won't go away. This is the bare bone basics for a lot of crafting for most builds. Is just getting a decent fracture on an item. And this is where I think a lot of newer players get confused because they look at what a content creator will use and they'll be like, oh, well, you know, this guy had fractured plus one spell skills. That's a very expensive item. You're not starting there, right? You'll start with, you know, fractured, you know, 30% elemental resistance or fire resistance or on a weapon, fractured burning damage. You know, you'll start small and slowly improve your gear as you go on if you want to craft. And you can find this uh, form of crafting on my website. If you just go to pox.net and you click the crafting button uh, at the top right, that will show you some basic entry level crafting. Okay, over here you can drop a portal. So we've got three bosses to fight. Um, I always get confused here, so I try to go clockwise or counterclockwise because you can re-enter the same portal. So, yep. These are kind of similar to the guys we fought when we were summoning um, uh, Malachi the first time, if you remember. So Chavron does a lot of damage. That orb is bad. You can run through it if you want to, but it does a lot of damage. Uh, her bullet spray does a lot as well. So here we're kind of just kiting around. You can really notice the damage difference in me dropping Skitterbots here. So going into Malagaro. And you don't have to if you don't want to. You can stay like this. We're getting the Skitterbots back once we take that aura wheel. Now, unlike the Juggernaut version, I don't like using Arrogance Vitality on Inquisitor. You can if you would like to. I feel that the regeneration is crazy strong already. This guy has a whole bunch of, like, mirror images, so you just try to kind of move around them. Okay, Dodre. Now, Dodre has uh, some funny mechanics here. So, Dodre is going to split, or not split, she's going to summon these stones. You're supposed to hide behind them, but again, as an RF build, we can just kind of face tank. The goal, like, what you're supposed to do is hide behind it, but even as RF, you hide behind the pillar, you're going to kill it by accident. So, I'm not sure if this fight is just kind of not designed very well, but that's just the fight. Okay, so now we're fighting this boss called uh, Trinity over here. So, Trinity... Again, put down a portal if you need to. It's a little tricky. She's going to spawn right here, so just throw some fire traps. Okay, a little bit in front. Hits really hard and does chaos. So these are like little chaos little spike things. 
She does this gigantic ball and then there's these books. Don't stand on the books. When she does this, she runs away, throw fire traps on top of you. She summons these scorpions who hit incredibly hard with physical. This is where determination comes in. So just keep going ahead. Just whack her, whack her, whack her. Don't stand in the pools. The pools are very bad. Don't stand in that orb. That orb is very bad. Now we're back in a scorpion phase again. So throw down your stuff. And she goes. Who is better, Juggernaut or Inquisitor? Yes. That is the best response I can give you. Okay, we are officially in Act 9. We're going to go ahead and continue here. This is the last act for us. So, two things that we want to do here, or actually not two, one thing we want to do. You can actually ascend before you kill Katava. Inquisitor's Merc Lab Ascendancy is very nice. So the Inquisitor's Merciless Labyrinth will give them another damage multiplier and help mitigate elemental damage. So that will be this node here, Augury. Monsters take increase and deal less. So very strong node. The zone level is 64, we are 63, so we're pretty close in level. Oh, perfect. So this, this takes me to a, something I forgot. When you see this little icon pop up, if you're following my guide, you'll see it talks about betrayal. So this here is Tora. She's extremely dangerous because she does chaos damage. Very dangerous with the chaos. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click her and we're going to explain betrayal in a nutshell. So when you click a target you will have an option of interrogating, bargaining, or releasing. Sometimes there's not bargain. Um, basically, when you bargain, you have a good chance of them dropping loot, so I'm going to click bargain here. She dropped this, this item with these squiggly lines on it. These squiggly lines right here allow you to unveil. So when you unveil, it basically has, like, the highest tier of that stat, right? This is very good for getting entry level gear because what happens is, say she dropped a pair of gloves and maybe they had a 72 life roll because that's not that hard to get. Well, you unveil and maybe you got 20% fire and chaos resistance and then you craft armor on those gloves. Now you effectively have a very strong three property item for gloves. Let's take a look at my gloves. I mean, they have like 28 life. They're, the base is just very out of date, right? So you, you can use that mechanic to get a lot of entry level gear. You don't have to worry about all the other stuff you can do with it. Just simply clicking buttons and getting gear and unveiling is very good. It's important to note that whenever you actually unveil the gear, you permanently unlock the ability to craft that stat. Granted, it's at a weaker potency. It's still very strong. Okay, so I don't actually have to do Ossuary here. This is for your Labyrinth. Um, I'm just going to move on and finish the campaign. Feels like only just a few hours ago we started. Oh, wait. Oh, our Stone Golem's dead. Let's resummon him. If you don't have the MP to re-summon the Stone Golem, you can always go ahead and uh, turn off an aura and then re-summon. Yeah, I'll be updating the uh, website FAQ since there's a couple hundred questions to uh, go through. Most of them are up to date. I just have to flesh out a few, uh, some text on some of them.
following for 10 years. Gosh, I'm old. Okay, so this place is kind of like the other place we went to um, when we were fighting Innocence. It's a very good zone in general for XP. A lot of high density, a lot of blue monsters in it. We're going to just try to zoom through as best as we can and get through and kill the boss. Alright, so if you've made it this far into the video, I want you to type the keyword. I don't know why I said keyword. I want you to type the word applesauce, and I want you to tell me your favorite thing with Righteous Fire so far. Anything. Anything that has, you know, popped out to you. It could be the fact that Inquisitor doesn't wear any pants. Sorry, that would be Templar. You know, it could be the fact that you run through and just burn anything. Just, you know, let me know why you're playing the skill or why you really like it. Not you, chat. This is for YouTube. They're over there spamming applesauce. I'm not sure what's up with them. <laughs> okay, this guy does very heavy physical. Don't stand in the way of the swipe. Don't set. So that's a swipe. We want to just move away from that. It's very dangerous. That guy as well. It's very hard. Those beams over there. Very angry. We don't want to get hit by those beams. That rapid spray of attacks. You don't want to get hit by it either. Okay. Now we're going to go through. Pretty much don't want to get hit by anything. Yeah, that's PoE in a nutshell. You don't want to get hit by anything until you're immortal and you can face tank it. Okay. So we're jumping through here to go fight a boss. I always forget this boss's name. It reminds me of Vienna Sausages. I used to have those as a kid. They come in like the can. Pretty sure they're absolutely dreadful for you, but that's okay. You know, I was a kid growing up. So I always remember this boss's Vienna Sausage. Let's see, where are they? Over here somewhere. There's like a waypoint down here. Let's see. That's a chromatic. There we go. It's down here. One thousand sodium per sausage. Oh man, dude, growing up, I don't know. I'm pretty sure if I ate the same way that I ate as a kid, which to be fair, you know, growing up we ate a lot of unhealthy things because at least my parents didn't really know what is put in what is bad you just buy what's cheap right i'm pretty sure i would not be able to move because i would be just so overweight <laughs> with just like the bad eating habits right like i remember being a kid and opening up like a lays potato chip bag of salt and vinegar and you know if i were to look at the back now and how much sodium is in that or the amount of servings per my goodness now i would just open it up and boot up some you know law and order svu and Bum, 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 and just start eating those potato chips and 30 minutes go by and the bag's empty and I'm like, oh, that's the family size? Well, yep. not anymore. I stopped that a long time ago. Long time ago. I guess you're the family. <laughs> I would have been as, you know, big enough to, to be my own family, <laughs> but no, I caught on quite a bit early, so... Okay, so this boss has a lot of degen, but we're kind of okay. They also, you drop a portal, they do this like crazy spray attack thing. 
You gotta be, uh, you gotta be a little careful. I got older and processed food just started tasting terrible. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I I've just grown really accustomed to really liking fresh food. I don't know why, like, I mean, I guess it does make sense, right? So I, I crave eating broccoli. I don't know, I love it. I just buy a, buy a broccoli crown or two, or even just the whole thing with the stem, and I just cut off the florets and cut part of the ending off and then dice up the other part, put it in a pan with a little bit of water, chop up some fresh garlic and put it in there and give it a nice like steam for a couple of minutes and it's great. I don't know, I love it. It's fantastic. Not every vegetable, but broccoli. I love broccoli, my goodness. That's just me. Okay, we got a skill point here. There's a lot more fresh food than fresh broccoli. Yeah, it's just, it's like my body craves certain nutrients from, not always, just from time to time. It's like when you really want to drink water, you know? It's like you go after a long run and water just tastes so much better after. It's just what your your body is craving. And I used to run track and cross, cross country when I was in shape uh, in high school. I'll never forget how good water tasted at the end. It was, it was amazing. Okay, so here... Let's see. Uh, we are going... I'll be honest, I always forget where to go here. I'm just going to go run in a direction. Okay. Okay. Go up. Oh, don't I need to go down for something? Go back and go to the right. Well, there's still like a zone. Pop, bro. Pop right. Well, I know to go to Katava, you go you go to the right, but there's like another zone. Isn't there? Am I just like stupid here? Isn't reliquary? What is reliquary for? What is this for? Do I get anything from here? This is the teardrop. It's regret orbs? That's wasting time. All right, if you want to give Lily back her teardrop, you can run reliquary. I don't want to give her the teardrop. I know it's not a skill point for sure. Yeah, now we're going to Katava. Before we kill Katava though, we're going to go ascend. So let's go to library. And we're going to go over here. So, this is Merc Lab. We're a bit under level. Azaro might slap us. So, you've got Bathhouse, Tunnel, and Ossuary. Those are where you get the three point, or the, uh, the whatchamacallits. We want one level up. One level up gets us a massive damage multiplier because we get our Skitterbots back. Okay, I'll try going this way. This is a weird one. Uh, let's go this way. Holy, that mob! Yep. 
We're going all the way to the left. Phase. Go. Try to slam me when he's supposed to be phasing. One of your lessons was completed, Ascendant. He's upset that we called him toxic like four hours ago. That really holds a grudge. I'll show you toxic. Wham! Rude Azaro. Mm, let's see. For newer players, careful zooming with traps. Um, what do you mean be careful? This is just ASMR. Died to traps here? Are you playing RF Inquisitor though, my friend? So even Juggernaut. Juggernaut will probably take some damage, but they also get endurance charges later. The only reason I took damage there at the end is because my uh my consecrated ground fell off because I was just holding left click. Jug died to the guillotine traps that slammed down. You may not have had your Ralakesh passive. The guillotines have a very heavy bleed. We're so close, yet so far. Actually, we're not far at all. We're very close. All we gotta do is ascend and then punch Katava in the face and attempt to not die so I don't get embarrassed. And then I think I'll speak on the Atlas for like a couple minutes and then we're done. Oh, so this is like a little secret here, but I'm pretty sure this is going to take me backwards. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know where I am. I'm not going to do this right now. I feel like it's taking me backwards and I don't know how to tell. That would definitely be using PoE Vault, or not PoE Vault, sorry, uh, PoE Wiki to, uh, to see uh, where that's taking you. PoE Vault is where you can find the Righteous Fire Inquisitor written guide that I have personally uh, dumped the information on there. So if you don't enjoy the video format, you can watch that. Of course, this is a different one. This is the leveling guide. Uh, so we'll have the POE guide come after. But you guys have already seen the POB, you're following it. The video just kind of dissects the POB a little bit and talks about the build. Oh, oh. got slowed there, that was a little spooky. Okay, let's click the altar, grab our augury. 
And we don't want anything here. So we're just going to run away. Perfect. To Katava we go. I knew that you would find the path of righteousness once more, my Lord of Light. I shall be honored to fight by your side. Never been the king of the north, my friend. So I'm gonna be uh, turning this off for a little bit. It's actually really funny. I barely get the Jon Snow comments anymore, but when Game of Thrones was, I'll just say in its prime, it would happen very frequently. Um, so you'll notice there when I click the Righteous Fire gem, uh, my AOE actually went up. That's because every four levels on Righteous Fire adds an extra radius. Um, so radius scales, radius is basically the base AOE, and then all increased AOE nodes help scale the radius. So you want a mixture of both of them. Oh, the loot filter should work for everything. Uh, the campaign filter should work for SSF, hardcore, softcore, jog, inquisitor, doesn't matter. High, it shows everything. Well, not everything, but everything that would be good enough for those two builds. Past this, um, I will make another one that is more designed for inquisitor since that's what I'll be league starting. But realistically, like you don't have to use a specific loot filter. You can just use a never sync default and uh, just slide around with the the slider on uh, how strict it is and you're good to go. The specific loot filter is just because it's my personal filter that I share with people. Perfect. Wow, not nice. We got that level up we wanted. It's time for Skitterbots. Perfect. Oh, even getting a fire trap level here. Yeah, so I'm actually just going to kill some mobs to get this because uh, it's big damage. This. I shall okay, here we go. So dodge that or you die. Katava does fire. You want to sit to one corner of the map. All right. Okay, I'm going to go jump on over here to the corner. We are good. Okay, let's move away from that little orb thing. Don't stand in those. Okay, let's start pre-throwing fire traps here for the heart. All right, back to Katava. Dodge that. That's the degen I'm gonna move away from. And then we have the heart here. May a new dawn okay, arise. that's it. Campaign run completed. I hope you guys have enjoyed the journey. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. 
Um, let's see here. How long ago did we make this character? Five hours and 20 minutes ago. Oh, wow, that's actually a lot shorter than I thought. Wow. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and go to the docks. So what we're going to go ahead and do here, uh, we're just going to click sail. There's a few more things I'd like to say, and then and then I'm pretty much done, right? So let's go ahead and walk over to uh, Lonnie over here. Uh, no. Okay, so over here, we're going to go redeem our bonus skill points. You can type slash passives. If you redeemed all of them, it should say 24. So here we got 24. Um, so that means we have acquired all of our passives. So what I would be doing from here now, you have to, I think, talk to Kirak, and then he wants you to go run a map down there. So if you look on my YouTube channel, you'll see a starting Atlas guide that I will personally be progressing. Now, this is what I talk about. I basically want to go into Jun with with uh, basically your focus investigation, bribery, effective leadership. This is so that you can start getting those crafts that I was talking about in the early game. Uh, since you guys are probably still here, if you've watched this long, I'm going to go ahead and flashbang you really fast. So this is the goals command in my stream, where it basically shows a lot of the crafts I like to use from Betrayal here. So when I play SSF, we typically kind of like check off these boxes. So here's a couple of ones that I'm referring to that you can get with Betrayal. But your primary goal essentially on your Atlas is to climb up the Atlas. Every time you complete a map, you're gonna get a bonus skill point. You wanna make sure you're doing the bonus objective. By skill point, I mean Atlas point, sorry. Um, and you want to fill out as much of this as possible. The more you fill out, the more points you get to put here. The whole point of this atlas is to customize your experience in Path of Exile to create the end game that you want to engage in. A lot of people get stuck here and just don't understand what to do, and that's where you can follow starter guides. But after you have a decent understanding on the atlas, I really encourage you to try doing something that you really enjoy. So for example, for me, a lot of what I do in the late game is I spec Grand Design, which gives me pack size per notable Atlas uh, skill point. So I end up getting like 35 to 40 percent uh, innate pack size on every map, and then that gets added to your bonuses. So then it's like 50 to 70 percent pack size. So there's monsters all over the screen, but it's not something I start with. It's something I respect to. And there's a whole bunch of these different keystones. If I type in keystone, all of these highlight and a lot of these keystones on the atlas really change something very very big right so for example uh, grand design and wandering path are basically the exact opposite anyway though like i said pretty much all the information i possibly have um i have dropped down for you guys don't forget if you do get stuck at any point in time during progression i do have this website that is designated for Righteous Fire. So over here, you probably watched at the beginning. This is where you grab the POB from. This is the exact one that we were following. Uh, and then I will put in Act 1 through Act 10 walkthrough. I'll rename this to Juggernaut and then put an Inquisitor one right next to it. And then over here is the FAQ. So you can search your questions. For example, a really common one that pops up is Juggernaut versus Inquisitor. And I have a lot of text here to explain it. Over the next couple of days, I'll be going through and kind of refining the questions because, uh, you know, just I've, anytime I play Righteous Fire, I really do learn stuff, even though I've played it so much and I like to really update this and keep it as up to date as possible. So all of the questions are valid and more so when somebody asks me something and I'm just kind of busy and I refer you to the website, I want to make sure I'm giving you the exact answer that I would normally be giving you, right? That's the beauty about this is that everything on here is literally my thoughts, right? And that's the best part of it, right? When you're looking at a question on here, you are reading an answer that I myself have typed up. And these questions are pulled directly from questions that you guys have given me. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Thanks again so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Appreciate all of the support. You guys are champs for making it this far in. I hope this has helped kind of teach you a little bit about Path of Exile so that you can enjoy it more going forward. One of the worst things about Path of Exile is there's so much to learn in the game and it can be so tricky to try to have fun in the game that is Path of Exile. But once you learn to have fun, I know that's so weird, 
it just never stops. It just never, ever, ever stops, right? Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Thank you.